Have you ever felt intimidated of just the thoughts of using Photoshop? Well, fear no more because today I'm going to go through everything you need to know to start using Photoshop for graphic design as a complete beginner. My name is Albert and I have personally used Photoshop every single day for over 15 years now to create some amazing designs and also reach a top level designer on 99designs.com with over 200 clients five star reviews for works i did personally using photoshop in this course i'm going to go through everything you need to know to start using photoshop for graphic design as a complete beginner this is a project-based course which means we are not going to go through everything or every tool but instead we are going to look at some practical real world examples by working on some projects together we will look at 10 beginner tips to help you master photoshop quickly then we will look at different graphic designs and i will show you how they were created using photoshop i'm also going to share with you the most important things to focus on when designing finally we will recreate this flyer as the course project by the time you are done watching this course you will learn how to work efficiently with type in photoshop how to increase your speed and design faster how to think like a professional designer different photoshop layer selection techniques where to find free premium icons where to find ideas whenever you are designing and much more there is a lot packed in this course this course is broken down into sections with timestamps below so feel free to skip to any section because of the length of this video i would highly recommend you save this video on youtube there's this safe feature save this video to your playlist and come back later to watch let's get started we are going to look at 10 beginner tips to help you master photoshop quickly let's start off with creating and using custom workspace is a really time-saving technique and let me show you how i use that personally so i'm going to launch photoshop i've launched photoshop and anytime you launch photoshop you see something like this and because I've been using Photoshop for a while. My workspace is a little bit customized to my need. So you can see here that I have some projects here that I was working on. So to show you how this works, I'm just going to create a new file. So let's go to file new and let's create a dummy document, which is a 1080p document. So let's go to the web preset, web large 920 by 1080. Make sure artboard is checked, resolution set to 72 and let's just create. So anytime you create a document in Photoshop like this, your workspace might look different and my workspace might look different. So I'm going to show you how to customize your workspace to help you improve your speed. So to get started, let's select the move tool and with the move tool selected, right click on the canvas outside here and you can change the color of this background. But sometimes you are working on a project that the theme of the project is dark. So you don't want the whole thing to be dark, but I've been using Photoshop for a while and I can see that the only background background you need is default except you are maybe that color blind with that said before we start actually customizing this workspace i'm going to reset my workspace to make sure that we are on the same page so i'm going to go to window workspace and reset essentials so because i've reset essentials my workspace should look familiar to yours and with the photoshop workspace there are some tools that we are going to need especially in this course by the way this video is part of a long video on how to create professional flyer designs in photoshop so i'm going to speak specifically in regards to graphic design and designing so let's customize our workspace to the tools that we will need most of the time so the first part of the workspace you are going to look at is the layers panel so this is your layers panel and i'm going to tell you that your layers panel is very important so we need to give it a very large space and to do that we need to close all these swatches color gradients pattern so to close all of these you click on this and you close tab group you and you close tab group and there are some tabs you're going to also need like the two properties bar which once you draw a shape is going to automatically pop up and once it pops up is actually going to decrease the space that we've created for our layers panel so the wise thing to do is just to drag 
you can actually drag any tab here so now once you drag it here and you close the tab group anytime i draw a new shape i'm not going to have the two properties bar pop up here again so that is the first one we're going to need and we're going to need the character panel so go to window and character the character panel is normally here so you don't need to drag it but if you want you can also drag that here and you can always hide these things you know you can always hide them and they are going to be floating around so once you click on them they will pop up okay so the next thing with the workspace is when we come to the tools panel there are some tools that are really important to us like the move tool the type tool and all that but when it comes to selection you can check auto select or decide not to check auto select and you can see that in my workspace here there are rulers here these rulers can be turned on and off by using command r or control r to turn them on and off and depending on the unit of measurements for example if you're working on a web project you need pixels and if you're working on a print project you need inches or centimeters or millimeters so you can change the unit of measurements here by hovering over the rulers and right clicking and changing it to pixels because this workspace is a web project i can going to change it to pixels so for now this is what we have in the workspace let me show you one last thing and because this is a long course i'm going to talk a lot about these things whilst we are working on the project so in the layers panel you can see that my layer thumbnails are big and it's because i've set them this will be so so to change the layer thumbnail you can just right click and just choose small or choose no thumbnail or choose large thumbnail so i prefer the medium thumbnail so that is also with that and you can also increase the space of the layers panel once you hover your mouse over this section you can actually increase the space here i prefer the layers panel to have more space because it's actually one of the most important parts when you are designing in photoshop all right so with that said let's move on to the next with photoshop selection is very key because we have basically two ways of selection there is the normal auto select once i select the move tool and i come to the tools options bar i can see auto select here and with auto select all i have to do is just to click on any element that i have here so let me just add some type here just to show you what i mean so i just click on it and with auto select you can also drag and select multiple elements and move them all together without auto select you have to hold the control key to be able to temporarily activate auto select and now i can select any of them and also without auto select you have to hold the control and the shift key to select two elements together so like this and this and i'm going to tell you that personally i don't like auto select because once we start diving into big projects you understand why there are most cases where you have a lot of layers you know and you are trying to select so i'm going to use the class project as an example to show you why sometimes selecting with auto select is a bad idea so for example i'm going to zoom into this part with a zoom to clicking on it and zooming in and using the space back to pan around for example with auto select if i just want to select just this element and i try selecting it it's actually going to move the background so you don't want to do that unless maybe you lock the background and you lock every layer beneath it so preferably when you are learning photoshop at the beginning let's not try to use auto select to save us so much hassle so now just turn off auto select and just to select this line here and this text here this text here i just have to hold the shift and the command key and just select so now i have to hold the control command and the shift and make sure select and the way photoshop selection works is that it selects based on the pixels you know so for example i'm zooming in with control plus if i try selecting this element here by clicking in the middle it might not select it so you have to target the line to be able to select it so by holding the control key it temporarily activates the auto select target the line then you click on it and you hold the shift key then it's, you click on the icon and you hold the shift key so your hands has to still be on the shift key then you select this to be able to select the three elements like multiple elements together there are other ways of selecting for example if you want to select some part of a photo or remove background of a photo we are not going to look at that in this video because those ones are specific scenarios which i'm going to deal in in another video but i just want to mention this quickly because this selection mode in photoshop with auto select and selecting multiple elements these are the ones that is going to really help you improve and master photoshop quickly all right so with that said let's move on so in photoshop things can get messy quickly and the best way to handle that is to stay organized so i have a project here like a flyer so this is actually the class project front and the back so the front here if i go into the layers panel you can see that i have some groups here which 
have not renamed them and some of them have grouped them and this can be a really bad habit and to work quickly and to master photoshop quickly you have to learn how to organize your layers and group your layers so for example i'm going to zoom in and just target this part here so i'm going to click on this part and you can see that i have this element here design you love grouped but i should have renamed them so that i can easily reference them anytime i'm designing i can just okay look at the name in the layers panel and say okay this is this element so anytime we are designing or you are designing you need to make sure that you group elements and to group elements you have to just make sure that you have the elements selected so for example i'm just going to ungroup this for now and group it again just to show you how this works ungroup it and to group elements you just have to hold the control and the shift key and select all the elements in there and that's what i was talking about with photoshop selection sometimes it can get really difficult especially so i have two text here so anytime i select an element i try moving it to see whether it's actually it's actually selected in the layers panel you can do that in the layers panel but sometimes you don't have all the elements in one order but there are cases where you still have to come to the layers panel and use the layer wheel here to move and try to turn layers on and off to be able to locate that particular layer so in this case this dot is too tiny that i have to come to the layers panel and hold the control key and select this two to be able to have all of these now it's left with actually the circle so this circle is beneath and because this is circular i'm not able to target the circle so again i have to come here and select this and be able to select all and i press ctrl g or command g to group them and I have to name them something that I can remember. Love. So I'm going to name them love. So that is also one key thing with organizing and staying organized. That will help you master Photoshop quickly and design faster. So all these elements, as you can see in the list here, have actually been grouped. So let me just turn them on and off. You can see that it's been grouped. So I should have named this group like section maybe section two i should have named this group and whilst i'm designing i have to name them so this tip can easily help you move faster because wherever there's order you can see things easily and move quickly all right let's move on in photoshop there are so many things or so many tricks that if you want to pull off you actually need to use masking and what is masking masking is all about hiding and revealing some part of an image and i'm going to show you some examples by bringing in an image uh, for example let's use this same image i'm going to bring this image in and assuming we want to let's say fade out this part of the image let me just bring this image here and i want to fade out this part of the image okay you can do that through masking that's not the only way you can do that through masking and to add a max click on the layer in the layers panel and this is a max tool click on it and it's going to add a white mask and in photoshop uh, when it comes to masking white reveals and black conceals what that means is that now that i have a white mask you can see everything on there but if i change for example if i change to the paint bucket tool and i have the black color here and i paint with the max selected i paint on it everything is going to be hidden if i change the color to 50 percent gray you can see it's 50 percent so that is the psychology of like masking but let me just show you how to create those like faded mask effect quickly so to create those kind of fade mask effect you do that by using the gradient tool so with the gradient tool right click here and select the gradient tool and you need to make sure that in the tools options bar you have set to basics and the second type of gradient which is fill to none so we should see like fill to a transparent gradient and you make sure that in photoshop your foreground color is this one is it says foreground color and the background color is this one says background color so you need to double click in the foreground color and set it to black since black is going to hide it and white is going to reveal it we need to set it to black in this case because we want to hide it and gradually fade into the image so now that we have the gradient tool selected and the gradient has been set to black to transparent all we have to do is just to hold the shift key we are holding the shift key because we want to create a straight gradient holding the shift key with making sure that you have you actually have your air max selected and just holding the shift key i when i draw it you can see that i'm actually creating a nice blend and you can see this on most websites and most flyer designs use this trick you're going to look at a lot of them later on so that is 
masking 101 anytime you want to pull off a trick where let's say i'm going to just use this shape as an example i'm going to draw this shape and you want to hide some part of this shape you can do that through masking but this is more of an example you hardly hide a shape part of a shape you just maybe probably have to use the direct selection to it's also another thing to just delay some part of the shape but just in case you understand masking and that is the best way you can work you can just use masking to just add a mask and just use the selection to what that is the rectangular marker to just draw to the part where you want to hide now that you have this selected and you have black as a foreground color if you want to fill this particular portion with black you just have to press option delete or option backspace option delete is just going to put black onto this side and just press ctrl d to deselect so that is masking how masking works you trying to hide some part of an image and you're trying to review some part of an image now that you've added a max you can also use a brush so once i press the b key to activate a brush to i'm going to go to the brush normal brush and in the two options bar i'm just going to change the size lower the size of the brush and make sure that i have black as my foreground color to hide it now if i paint on this you can see that i'm actually hiding this part and it, it depends on the color i'm using to paint if i paint on with white nothing is going to happen but if i paint with black you can see that a lot is happening so i need you to just try and practice these masking techniques because you're going to go deep into them once we start looking at the projects once we start working on the project so let's move on there's been cases where a lot of beginners they are working with an image so for example let me just go to google and just search for an image of of a dog and anytime you are looking for an image you need to pay attention to the image resolution so let me just click on this and see so currently this image is 900 by 750 sometimes you might like an image but the resolution is not higher enough for your work so you need to pay attention to that and you can increase the resolution of an image in photoshop let me show you how to do that so let's say i like this image but the resolution is not large enough to increase it which might make it a little bit distorted and a little bit pixelated but sometimes that is the only image you have to work with i'm going to save it save image as i'm going to save it on my desktop and actually open it in photoshop all right so to actually view the resolution of this image in photoshop you have to press command alt i to bring out the image size dialog box and this is current resolution 72 and the current size is 900 by 507 so we want to make this a little bit larger and before you do that let's convert this into a smart object you are going to look at smart objects in this list but for now let's just right click and just convert to smart object i'll tell you about smart objects later and let's press command option i again and change the weight to 2000 so you want the image to be 2000 weight and if you press okay you can see that this image if i is actually getting blurred it's actually getting pixelated and the work around to this is you can sharpen it and you can also increase the contrast of it so let me just try sharpening it and so to sharpen it you go to filter sharpen so we can apply a sharpening effect to it you can apply multiple sharpening effects to its second sharpening effect and you can also apply an unsharpened marks to it which also does something different to it but you have to zoom into the image and just play around with it to see if you like the effects it is actually creating so this is before so i'm using a space bar key with my hands on a space bar key to just pan around so this is before after this after this is before this is after so these are ways you can use to work around like a weak photo but preferably whenever you want to design in photoshop you want to work with an image that has a higher resolution of above thousand two thousand pixels wide it is very essential that smart objects you're going to need them mostly when you are working with images smart objects just protect images let's just bring an image in in our previous section we use this dog image let me just drag it in and i'm using the command alt option i to reveal the resolution of this image which is a little bit smaller and in order to apply non-destructive adjustment to this image i need to add a smart object to this image so i'm going to cancel it and to add a smart object to this image i need to right click and convert to 
smart object so now that i have converted it to smart object if i try minimizing this image and let's say i'm working and i have to maximize it again and i have to minimize it again the image data doesn't get lost but let's look at the same image let's let me let's bring the same image into photoshop and let's do the same trick again let's try minimizing it press enter maximizing it press enter minimizing it press enter the more we do this the more the image loses its data maximizing it do press enter so okay so the reason why this is nothing is happening is because photoshop new feature because i'm using the latest version of photoshop anytime you bring an image in it's automatically as a smart object so that is the symbol for the smart object that's why nothing is happening but just in case you have an image in that doesn't have a smart object you're not going to see this icon here so whilst i was doing that i realized that nothing was happening because i didn't have the smart object feature turned on so let's do it again let's do it like four times so this is one two you can see what is happening the image start losing data quickly and you don't want that to happen with your image so now we've lost you have to lost the image completely so smart objects anytime you bring an image into photoshop and you don't see this icon please turn on smart objects to protect the quality and the resolution of your image and also smart objects is non-destructive editing for example if i enlarge this image and i try let's say let me go to the adjustment image adjustments and let me just add hue and saturation let me just add something to it anything i add here it doesn't it does not affect the original image i can just open the smart object by double clicking inside and now i have i still have the image in so whatever i'm applying to it it's just affecting the outer part of the smart object that is all for now let's move on to look at using the gradient tool and gradient is a path to show you how gradient works let me i'm going to delete all these elements and create a new create a new background with a paint bucket to let me set the background to white so to draw a gradient for example you see a lot of tricks where one color and start with another color to do that you can for example you have a shape here you select a shape to we can change the fill of this shape directly to a gradient you know in the tools options bar here and just set the color from here say from red to yellow and just start drawing a, the shape you know but that is really one way of doing it but let me show you how i personally do gradients because that gives me i feel that gives me more control so you can still use this and with this with a chip selected and with the list selected you can control the angle of the gradient so if you want a linear gradient you can or radial gradient angled gradient diamond gradient you can control the opacity the the reflection of the gradient you can do all that here the method of the gradient you can do all that here but let me show you another way of creating a gradient which i personally use so to do that for example let's say i want a header here i've drawn a shape here and because i have i've set the properties to gradients let me just turn that off by coming to fill setting to basics first of all let me make sure that the gradient is set to none the fill should be set to okay so i've changed it to a normal fill and now i'm going to switch to black and draw a shape here let's say this is our website and you want to create the same gradient you can do that by using the layer style here in the layers panel you click on the fx and you click on gradient overlay and with this you can use this gradient overlay and click on this this will pop up the gradient editor and you can change double click on the stopper and change the color to whatever color you want so the way it works is you just move this to the part you want and use the pointer to select and you move this to the part you want you have to double click and if you click here it's going to add another stop so you can add more stops in between or for now let me just double click on this and change the color to this and let's add one stop in the middle and let's change it to yellow so that is how to add gradient and you can customize the smoothness of the gradient you can add more stops here you can customize the direction of the gradient so these are all stuff you can play around with and one very important thing when it comes to gradient is understanding how to also edit the options so you can actually reverse the gradient and also change the angle of the gradients as i was talking before in the other side change the scale of the gradients you can see that as i play around with it it's moving you can change the opacity of the gradient you know you can change the blend mode we are going to look at blending modes you can change the blending modes of the gradient so that is 
how to create a gradient and this same thing i just shared with you you can do the same thing with text tool so for example if i select a text tool and add a text see this lorem epson you can add the same gradient overlay on this text and it's going to work but let me show you one trick here to quickly duplicate this gradient on this all i have to do because it's a layer star and that is why i told you i prefer this style of adding gradient is because with the layer star you can easily copy and paste onto another layer by holding the option key on the mac or the alt key on windows i can just paste this gradient over here all right so now let's move on to help me explain this to you let me just use this class project for this course and using rulers it's very important when it comes to alignment and alignment is one of the principles of design and you can see that the reason why this design for example looks clean and it looks well done is because the alignment rule has been really followed so let me just zoom in and to bring out the rulers you have to press ctrl or command r to bring out the rulers so currently i had it on but now it's hidden so with ctrl or command r i can bring it back and just to drag it just drag it and you can set rulers in to help so you can see that as i brought this ruler in it, everything here is aligned and there are some alignment that you have to align with your eye for example using this shape and this sh as an example you have to just align by using the alignment panel like this you just have to use center align but if i bring the ruler here you can see that it's really not aligned to the ruler so i'm just using the, the physical mass of the icon to align it all right so this is about using rulers so i'm not going to really talk about that but the main point i'm trying to help you understand is that anytime you are designing you really have to be dragging multiple rulers to make sure that most of your elements are aligned and this is really going to help you improve the look and feel of your design and you can see that over here let me just drag the ruler and show you the lines here are well aligned so you can do that by bringing in rulers up here so you can bring in rulers to help you align elements you know make sure that all these elements are aligned so that is all for how to use rulers as guide to help you improve the look of your designs blend mode is a very key feature in photoshop and to help to explain how blend mode works is let me go to, i'm going to use this class project as by the way if you are watching this on youtube and are watching this just this video this is a part of a very long course on how to create professional flyers in photoshop so the project files for this will be in the description and you can go and watch that full video to get clear understanding of how to create professional fly in photoshop so let's say with this image i have here i want to add let's say an overlay which is a colored overlay on it so i've turned the opacity of this image to 100 percent and i'm going to have a shape beneath it but i'm going to duplicate the shape by holding the alt key and just bringing the shape in front blend mode is more of a color thing that's although there are dark blend modes but to really experience blend modes is more of a color thing so i'm going to change this to let's say to this color sample this color and now now that i have this shape on top of the image over here in the layers panel there are, this is a normal blend mode let's switch so you can just tag the blend modes to see which one let's toggle it to show you so this multiply this color band this is linear band this is darker color this is lighter color this is screen so you can see that anytime i set a different blend mode the look changes you see a lot of designs that they have this i prefer the multiply here because it looks cool but i wouldn't use this necessarily for this because it looks too orangey but i just want to explain to you how blend modes works and how you can play around with blend modes to create different effects let's say there's this image here and you can see even the visual technique of this image it looks like as if the image has been like two images that has been blended into into each other so that is the whole concept of blend modes so let's just drag this image into this timeline let's put it on this with a top layer selected if i try playing with it you can see that now i'm just trying to blend two images together to create a look so that's how blend modes work you can just set it to one okay let's say soft light and you can control the opacity of the blend mode and you can control the fill of the blend mode so this is a very cool trick that you can always use to visually communicate something in photoshop one of the things that you're going to be using a lot is the transform tool i have this project here which is a project file for this and going through these projects i use the transform control a lot and, and the way the transform control works is that for example if you add a shape so let's say i'm going to add a shape here and i want to resize this shape automatically there is this handles here which is all part of the transform control but once you deselect this shape by selecting the move tool and let's say you want to 
enlarge the shape you can only do that by using a transform control and to activate the transform control you have to press ctrl t make sure that you have the shape selected press ctrl or command t to bring out the transform control you can see that there's this uh, handles here so before i do that let me just change the color of this so that we can actually see this better ctrl t to bring out a transform control and with a transform control you can rotate this shape you can enlarge this shape once you hold the shift key it creates a different effect you can like free the shape like in terms of the aspect ratio of the shape but what i normally use transform control to do is apart from these ones are uh, to even create curved shapes for example i'm going to use control t transform control again and use the shift key and enlarge this shape you know the reason why some you have to use the shift key is because if you don't use the shift key it's going to enlarge it proportionately so i just want to enlarge it like this and now without pressing access modification if i right click on it it also has its own different options here what i use a lot is this one the web settings so i can use that to create those kind of curvy shapes that you normally see in flyer designs a lot we also need this to create like even more caps so if i go to for example if i go to google and i search for business card mockup and let's say i like this mock-up and i've designed a business card for my clients most of these mock-ups are free but i just want to use it i'm going to bring the mock-up into photoshop and now with a shape tool i'm going to draw like in the size of my business card like this and to make this shape the shape of this i first of all have to convert this shape into a smart object so that i can place my image in later on so more about that later on but for now let's just just follow me as i work so that it doesn't become too complicated for now let's let me just change the color to red and right click and convert to smart objects and let me name this front just to stay organized and now if i press ctrl t and right click and choose distort so distort is also another feature distort you can transform the corners of this shape independently you know so that is one of the things that i normally do anytime i'm done creating a design for a client and i want to present it i can use this distort feature you know to help me present my work to the client so i actually have to zoom in to make sure that everything here is well aligned and now that i have it i can open the smart objects and just put anything inside let's put this doc in there and accept modification and now i'm going to close it with ctrl or command w so save it and you can see that now i have the doc placed in there so the transform control with the control t there are a lot of features here you can use it to flip an image you can use it to flip horizontal you can use it to flip right vertical you can use it to rotate you can use it to even change the perspective i also use this a lot change the perspective so i wanted to just go in there and play with it and this is really going to help you understand how the tool works so that is all for this section on tips to help you improve in photoshop quickly this is not a comprehensive how-to course but if you are learning photoshop at the beginning i think these things are actually going to help you improve or these are things that most people they don't touch on but i wanted to just mention them in this video so to get started this is the project that we are actually going to be working on and this is sort of a personal plier that i did just to send to some of my clients just the backstory of that so to get started this is an a5 flyer standard a5 flyer i'm going to close it for now and let's start working on this so i'm going to have the link to the project files in the description so if you want to follow along with me so with the project files open you're going to see all these elements here i have all the icons i use all the elements i use so Everything that I'm going to be using, I'm going to pick from here. There's a copy also here. That's all the ways in the flyer. And I believe the best way to learn is to follow along with me. All right, let's get started. You're going to first and foremost create a document. So to do that, I'm going to go to new file or file new. And this is an A5 document. So come to print, click on print and click on view presets and A5. Check add boards for now and make sure that the resolution is set to RGB and name this flyer. I have my flyer created. I'm just using the space bar key to pan around and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to control manuals. I need to, first of all, duplicate this artboard because the flyer is going to be two sides. So hold the Alt key and duplicate. I might be going a little bit fast for you, but because you're watching this on YouTube, you can just slow the video down a little bit or you can pause it and just do it along with me. All right, so by clicking on this artboard, it's activating the layers panel. I'm going to name this front and also clicking here, double click on it and name this back. 
So anytime I start designing, I first of all want to bring in my copy. That is very important because you don't want to be going back and forth. So in the project files, I have this copy prepared. So let's just click and, and drag and select everything here. So I'm just going to control C to copy or command C to copy. And in Photoshop, when you're using art balls, you can actually paste something over here, like outside these two art balls. So I'm going to select the type two and once the two is selected, make sure that in the two options, but I have the right font active. So the font that I use for this is Montserrat. I'm going to also include that in the projects files so that you can install it. But make sure I have Montserrat selected and for now, just regular. And I'm going to set it to, let's say 16 points for now. And I'm going to add a text box here. So. To add a text box, I'm just going to click and drag. So you, you, you click and you drag and it's going to populate a default text box and I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste. So now I can't see anything probably because of the color of the font. So just double click here and make sure the color is white and click here to accept modification. So now that we have our copy in, in design, you want to make sure that you really understand the message you are trying to communicate. Design is all about communication. So we are trying to communicate. So you need to know what is the focal point. So this is all about design subscription for small to medium sized businesses. So there's lots of information, but the main idea is design subscription for small to medium sized businesses. So we want to highlight that. But before we even think of highlighting everything, I'm going to show you what I normally do. What I normally do when I bring my text in like this is that I break the text into individual layers and to do that, click i'm going to click inside and drag on the first text control x to cut it i'm going to deselect this by selecting the move to select the type to and click control v to paste this might be overwhelming to you so i wanted to pause this video and just try doing it again so the font is currently white i'm not seeing it so to change the color of the font i'm going to press t to activate the type 2 so here and click here to to bring out the color picker dialog box and change the color to black for now so now i have this font here but it is filling this whole point which i don't want so to minimize this font i'm going to activate the transform control there's something called transform control in photoshop control t to activate the transform control and just minimize it like this so with this done that is the same principle i'm going to use to separate this whole text i want to make sure that they are on their separate layers so currently in the layers panel i have this text on its own layer so that is the same mindset i want all these points on this separate layer so that i can move them independently so i'm going to do that quickly so you can see that as I am bringing in the, the text independently, I'm also duplicating the font. The way I'm doing that is holding the Alt key and just duplicating it. So I have this font, for example, I'm just holding the Alt key here. I'm holding the Alt key and I'm duplicating it. So, Right now, I have all the copy in, especially on the front side. And you can see that all of them are on their separate layers here in the layers panel. And the advantage of this is that it helps us position things independently. All right. Now that I have the copy in, I want to show you how I arrive at the final design. I did that through, first of all, looking for inspiration. And I'm just going to bring in the logo. I just brought this logo in. And the way I did it, it's quite simple. Let me just show you. Let's open the project files and just drag it into the artboard. And once you drag it, you can position it and just use the check mark to accept modification. But currently, it's not looking good. So let me just put it here because it's supposed to be on a white background. Control T to activate the transform control and let me just minimize it. And what I'm just trying to show you is. I wanted the form of this logo to influence my design and it feels rounded and everything looks geometric. So when I was looking for inspiration on Google, 
what I did was that I look for, let's say you go to Google and look for flyer design. Normally, I, maybe flyer design, natural designs. Natural designs is a global crowdsourcing platform, you know, and there's a lot of top creatives there. So this one is an easy one. The first one, you can see that this particular design was the one that actually influenced my decision. So I just saw an opportunity here that, okay, I'm actually going to use this particular design, saved it and brought it into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I've saved it and I'll drag it into Photoshop, drag it here. So this is what actually influenced my decisions. We are going to start off by adding the image first. So let's add the image in the project first, locate the image. This is the image, just add the image. And this image is going to serve as a background. So just drag it in and don't ever like try dragging it. Sometimes it depends on your Photoshop setting, it might skew the image. So you don't want this to happen. So make sure you just use this corners to scale it. But just in case you are having that, it's because of the settings in your Photoshop. So you have to just hold the shift key to fix that. So accept modification and let's just push this down a little bit. Photoshop works based on layers. So now that I have this image in, this image is actually on top of all this text and I had to bring it down. I'm actually going to close all these tab groups by clicking here and closing tab group. Just dragging it down, make sure it's the last thing in the layers panel. This is actually an empty layer, so I can click on it and delete it. So just click on it and delete it and position this here. Now that I have this here, looking at our final design, we can see that we actually have dark overlay on it just for contrast because as you're going to add text on top of this image, we need to make the text pop. And to do that, you're going to use the rectangle to select the rectangle to make sure you have the fill set to black and drag this on top of this image. So this is a black shape and let's lower the opacity of this to somewhere around 50. So let's set it to 50. So let's do that in the layers panel to 50. Now, this shape, how did I actually create this shape? Creating this shape is actually a little bit complicated, but I want to make it simple for you. To do that, you first of all need to select the shape to first. When you select the shape to click on fill, select a white fill. In Photoshop, anytime you are drawing a shape and you have a previous shape selected, it's actually going to change the properties of that shape. So let's undo, go back by clicking Ctrl Z to undo. All right, so with that done, what we are going to do is deselect this shape by selecting the image beneath it and just drag it. Yeah, so with this, we have this shape here and I'm going to make sure the shape is on top of this image. Change the color to white. To do that, double click on this square thumbnail. Click here. So once I double click on the square thumbnail, automatically, anywhere I point my mouse, it automatically changes into the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper tool, I can sample the white and click OK. Now, the next big challenge is how do we create these curved shapes here? And to do that, we can try still using the shape tool, but the best is to use the pen tool. The pen tool is a very complicated tool, but I'm going to try to make it really simple for you to understand. So to select the pen tool in the layers panel, just click on this tool, the pen tool, or just press P to activate the pen tool. Once the pen tool is selected in the tools options bar, make sure that it's set to shape and you have the fill set to white and the stroke set to none. All right, so with this done, make sure you don't actually have a shape selected in the layers panel. So I'm going to select a text and to create this kind of curved shape, let's draw this shape on top of this so that we can get a perfect angle, you know. In the project files, I have the final image there. So you can put that final image beside it and you're going to draw, use the pen tool, select the pen tool and actually start from here. So we are drawing a straight path. So we start from here and hold the shift key, you know, and come here, somewhere here, 
and click but when you click don't leave the mouse hold it and just move it you know my hands are still on the mouse and now i'm going to hold the option key or the alt key on windows that frees up this this is a little bit complicated for a beginner so please rewind this video and do it follow along with me so with this done if i hold the shift key i can control the angle of this so i want the angle to be somewhere around here so now that i've done that i'm going to just click and so i'm clicking and holding the shift key so now that i've done this i'm going to end it here hold the shift key click here so all this side i want it to be perfect uh, straight line so with this done we have the shape here so all i have to do is just to duplicate it and flip it So to duplicate it, I'm going to do Control J to duplicate. In the layers panel, Control J duplicates it. And to flip it, I'm going to do Control T to activate the transform control. And right click and choose flip horizontal and just drag it here. So that is how to get such a shape, you know. So first and foremost, now that I have it here, I'm going to select these two shapes by holding the shift keys and selecting these two shapes. And I'm going to merge them. To merge them, just use Control E to merge them. Command or Control E to merge. So these are a lot of shortcuts, but because this is a video, you can easily pause it and follow along with me. All right. So I'm going to drag that here and then hold the Control T to activate the transform control and then just enlarge this. Now we have this shape, just push it up. This part of the layers panel, the space here is still not enough for me. Because you're using the shape tool, you are going to have the shape properties tool popping up most of the time. So I'm just going to drag this into this side and close all this tab group so that you can have more room in the layers panel. Now, we have to move the shape we drew here and the image up a little bit. And scroll down in the layers panel and select these two, image and the shape on top. And let's actually group them. So to group layers, you press Ctrl G or Command G to group. And this, you can name it by clicking on the group, targeting the group, double-clicking it and naming it. So let's say picture... So I'm going to name it BG picture. Now with that selected, you can move it up. And at this point, we actually don't need the shape we drew because it's actually not necessary. So we can select just the shape we drew initially and I'm going to delete it. If this feels overwhelming for you, kindly pause it and rewind and learn how it's actually done. Okay. So this shape is on top of all these layers and it's not being seen. So let's just drag it. So you drag it and you hold the mouse key. My hands are still on the left click of the mouse and I'm dragging it just beneath all this, just on top of the uh, BG picture group and select the logo and let's resize the logo. Control T to activate the transform control and let's just resize the logo. All right, so that is it for now. So in the next section, we are going to look at formatting the text on the hero section. All right, so now that we have this top section done, let's focus on this section here. And this section, the main text that we want to put here is design subscription for small to medium sized businesses. So I have the text selected here. And to change the color of this text, press the T on your keyboard to activate the text tool and click here to bring out the color picker dialog box and change the font to white. There are certain things that you need to do. For example, your font might look different. And I said earlier on that the font I'm using is Montserrat. Choose Montserrat and you change the fonts by coming here and actually searching for Montserrat. And we want Montserrat's extra bold. And let's format this well. So the way I want us to format this is you put your mouse here and you press enter. 
you put your mouse here, you press enter, but make sure that there, there's no dead space here. So just click and drag to delete any dead space here. So with that done, click here to accept modification and select the move tool. We want to enlarge this because that is actually the focal message. So press Ctrl T to activate the transform control and enlarge it. So the size really is subjective, but this looks okay for me. So make sure it looks something similar to this and accept modification. Now, this is the focal image, but we are still not done. This is a headline. So we are going to close the gap a little bit to make it look pretty a little bit. So to close the gap, we need to bring out the character panel. This, I think it's here, but if you don't see it here, you can just go to window and character to bring out the character panel and we're going to close the individual gaps, which is called the tracking. So we're going to close the tracking a little bit. So click here and set it to 25, negative 25 to close the tracking. Now, what is the focal weight? Anytime we are designing, we want to make sure that as we are designing, we are also communicating. It's not just putting text on our canvas. We are also communicating. So the focal word is design subscription. And to highlight that, I want us to change the rest of this text for small to medium-sized businesses to Montserrat Light. And to do that, just double-click inside. Anytime you double-click inside the text, activate the text tool and drag around it, you know, to select this. And let's change the font of just that to Montserrat. Let's say regular and let's see. And this brings me to one of the key principles of design, which is contrast. Anytime you are designing, contrast is really key. And contrast is how, as human beings, how we see as human beings. Okay, so with this done, I'm going to select the move to and move it somewhere here. Let me show you how to use the rulers in Photoshop. So let's bring out the rulers by clicking on Command R or Control R to bring out the rulers. And once you have it active, just drag it. And it, you just click here and you drag. So alignment is also one key principle in design. So we want to make sure all our elements are well aligned. And once we have our rulers in, we are going to align our elements there. So the next key text we want to bring here is pause and cancel anytime. So I'm going to select this and change the fonts. Press the T key to activate the type tool. This will bring out the two options bar here. Click sample this white color. Click on the move to control T to activate the transform control and just minimize it. Just put this here. Make sure that it is well aligned. So I'm just using the, the control plus to zoom in. So just make sure it's well aligned. All right. So now we have our heading font here and the position of the picture and the, the heading is a little bit conflicting. So anytime you are designing, you want to make sure that you pay attention to these stuff. So I'm going to select these two heading and the post and cancel anytime and move it down a little bit to make sure that it's actually not blocking the faces of our subjects to help tell our story. All right, so once this is done, these elements, I'm going to move them down here. The way I'm doing it, because I'm not using the auto select, I'm actually using the shift and the command key to select all these elements. So currently my hands are on the shift and the command key and I'm selecting all these elements here you know and i can move them but if you're using the auto select you can't really do this unless you lock this layer and you drag around so that is also another approach but preferably please don't activate auto select and let's use the shift and the command just targets the element you want to select all right so with that done let's focus on creating this shape so I think because this is a complete beginner course, I'm going to delete this and bring in our final design here just so that we can have something to reference to to show you how I created this element here. So I brought this here. Just, let's minimize it a little bit and accept modification. 
Okay, so if you hold Z on your keyboard, it activates the zoom tool. So you hold the Z to activate the zoom tool. And once you leave it, you can also use the command minus to zoom out and use the spacebar key. Once you hold the spacebar key, you can actually pan around, you know. The next key thing I want us to create is this line here. So the purpose of this line is called anchoring. We use that to anchor this text. To hide these rulers, you use command semicolon. It's command semicolon to hide the rulers that you just brought in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just draw a line here. And to do that, I'm going to use, you can use the line tool or the rectangle tool, they all work. And the psychology here is that you don't want the line to be too big, you don't want it to be too light. So let's use the rectangle tool and let's make sure that your fill is set to white and your stroke is set to none. And just click and draw a rectangle. I don't have a size in mind, but I'm just going to draw it. But I'm going to show you what I normally think about when I'm drawing a rectangle. Normally, I want the weight of the rectangle to be the same weight as the horizontal side of the lettuce. That is just for consistency and it always works that way. Because this is a little bit bold, I'm going to make this also a little bit thicker. So I'm going to hold Control T to activate the transform control and just hold the shift key and make this a little bit bigger and i can actually bring it here to make sure it's the same width here yeah but this is not an exact science sometimes i do it and i feel like okay let me just bring it down a little bit because now the shape is overpowering so it's not an exact science so so now i can still feel it's overpowering so i'm just going to bring it down a little bit and place it here and just to anchor this text all right so with that done let's focus on creating the shape this rounded shape here and how i did that is before i draw the shape let's select the image layer that's the background picture layer and the reason why i'm selecting the background picture layer right now is because i want the shape to be directly on top of it because if you, you draw it, it's going to come on top here and we have to move it all down here. And that is also going to take some time. So select the background BG layer, select the shape tool and let's draw a shape. And this shape is what you're going to use. And Photoshop new feature is that you can actually use this to round the corners directly here. But just in case you are using older version of Photoshop and you don't see this, you can go to the window and the properties and just activate the properties panel. And with that, you make sure that you have the link checked and then you just make it rounded, you know. So that's the whole idea. And you can see that the rounded shapes is echoing throughout the whole design. So that is how this works. And let's change the color of this shape. To change the color of this shape, just double click in this square thumbnail. And I'm going to sample this color here. Okay. So with this done, I want us to focus on adding this text subscribe and request as many designs as possible. So let's format this text, this text. So now I'm holding the control key, clicking on it. And this text, they are all going to be here. I'm going to hold the control and the shift key and select all these three. Press T to activate the text options bar here. Now they are selecting the layers panel. So now that they are selected, let's change the color. Click here to change the color to white. And let's just change the font size to seven. And now we can just select the move tool and deselect it by holding the control key and clicking on the background shape. Let's select the first one and format it independently. To do that, I'm going to press the T key to activate the type to here and format this. You see the way this has been formatted over here. So just format it like it is over there. And anytime you are formatting a text like this, you, have, you want to make sure that there's no dead spaces at the end. That is very key here. So I don't want any dead spaces at the end. Control A to highlight everything 
and let's use the tools options bar because you have the type tool selected to make sure that it is center aligned and accept modification and now we can just use the move tool and move it here so that is the same process i'm going to use to format the rest of the three fonts So I have all these three text here formatted. I'm going to hold the shift and the control key or command key to highlight all these three. And I'm going to make sure that the spacing inside is the same. And how do I do that? So once I have these three text selected, automatically in the tools options bar, I'm going to have this aligned panel and you're going to click on this one. This, the one that looks like this distribute horizontal centers and it's going to space out the text evenly. And I'm going to bring this down here and actually before I do that, anytime I want to deselect something, I hold the control key and I click outside. Like I click on any other shape instead of that particular selection that I have made. So I click here to deselect it and click back on the text to activate it and move it back a little bit. Click here, move it back a little bit. And now I can hold the shift and the control key and select this tray and now I can align them horizontal centers okay so now that we have this here let's draw this shape that's this outline here just i added this just for separation to do that i'm going to use the rectangle tool and with the rectangle tool just draw a rectangle like this and make sure that they are rounded and if you don't see that you can follow the same process I did before to bring out the properties panel and make sure that they are rounded. And there's not an exact science to it, but the rule is that make sure that the rounded corners here and this and this feels like it feels the same, you know. And we actually want to make the stroke of like, this feel none and the stroke white. There are two ways of doing this, and I'm going to show you the first way which is now that we have the shape selected in the tools options bar let's set the fill to none and let's set the stroke to white and let's set the point size of this to five okay so now we have this shape so i want to go back to the tools options bar and to do that use the u key if you press u on your keyboard once you have the shape selected it's actually going to activate the tools options bar with the shape to i'm going to change this back to four yeah can close all these tabs if just in case you have them here i'm going to duplicate this two times by holding the alt key making sure that the shape is selected and just duplicating it and now the space inside is a little bit too cramped so i'm going to select the tray hold the shift and the control key and click on this tray so the challenge with selecting an object which is not filled is that you will try selecting it and it's not being selected is because the way Photoshop sees is different from the way we see. Photoshop sees the actual pixels, you know. So if you want to select this stroke, you need to actually make sure you are targeting the, the stroke, you know. So to do that, I, I think you need to zoom in a little bit and use the space bar key to pan around. And I'm going to hold the shift and the control key and now I'm going to target the stroke instead of the fill the stroke so now I'm, I'm actually selecting the three stroke just in case you have the background shape selected you can deselect it by holding the control key and deselecting it so you don't have to hold the shift key just hold the control key and deselect it or preferably you can just lock this shape but we don't want i don't want to deselect it so for now i have it selected here and what i want us to do is let's resize it these three shapes together and to do that press ctrl t to activate the transform control and just drag it to resize it together let's position it well and i want it to be a little bit taller so i'm going to hold the shift key and just make it a little bit taller and i feel these three shapes needs to be grouped and i want it to be grouped with this text so to do that for now i'm going to accept modification and 
hold the shift and the control key my hands on the shift and the control key select these three text as well so now i have these three selected and press ctrl g to group this and grouping is a very useful uh, technique or it's kind of also going to save you time later on anytime you are working in photoshop if you group your elements because things in photoshop gets messy quickly and you want to be using this group feature to be able to organize your layers okay so now that we have this group i'm going to name these features for now so okay so now that i have this done i'm going to use the control key select this and position this in between and anytime it's in between it snaps photoshop has this uh, auto align feature that it helps it snaps so position it here select the move to position it and you'll see these lines here that sort of snaps okay so i'm going to zoom out a little bit for now and now that we have this i'm going to bring in our icons so the icons they are in the i got them from flaticons.com so this is the website flaticons.com and you can also use now project you can also use now projects for your icons they all provide a lot of nice clean modern icons so the first icon we need is this one so make sure you have the folder open and just drag it so let's just drag all the three together so that we don't have to come back here so we need like this this and this so my hands are on the control key and i click on them together so i have them selected and i'll just drag the tray onto so photoshop brings elements in one after the other so you have to just ask, check modification check modification check modification and now we have the three elements in but one is bigger than the other for reasons i don't really know but we just have to resize them make it smaller so let's select the bigger ones in the layers panel so in the layers panel locate the two here i'm going to locate the two here have them make sure it's selected and control t to activate the transform control and let's just minimize it you know let's make it smaller and the way i'm minimizing sometimes some of you your photoshop to minimize you need to hold the shift key sometimes when you minimize you can see that it becomes distorted if you are seeing something like this it probably because maybe the settings in your photoshop so you have to play around maybe hold the shift key and try minimizing and see but currently my photoshop the transform i don't need to hold the shift key i just have to just click on the corner and it will minimize you know but let me know in the comments if you are facing that very problem so i'm going to minimize it here so now i'm going to make the icons a little bit bigger than the text the two icons are stacked on top of the other so to separate them i'm going to use the layers panel here and select the receiver drag it here the principle here whenever you are adding icons to your design is that you want to maintain consistency consistency is very key in design consistency in what consistency in the stroke weight of your icons consistency in the size of your icons consistency in the position of your icons and even consistency in the style of your icons too i'm going to bring out the rulers so i have the rulers here let me just bring one here and one here so i'm going to make sure that all my icons are sized appropriately select the second one and anytime you are selecting make sure you target it well you know you can zoom in to select it Control t to activate the transform control and yes so i'm just going to bring this here to make sure that everything is well aligned and once this is done i'm going to group all these elements together so hold the control key and select these three elements control j to group the elements and i'm going to name these icons and i'm going to zoom out a little bit how do we apply white color to these icons we need to add a layer style effect how do we add a layer style effect to add a layer style effect you make sure that this folder is selected the group that you've created is selected and you come down here and you click on fx color overlay 
and this dialog box should pop up and you can actually move this around you know and double click here and change the color to white you can just point or you can just sample the color whites from the artboard okay okay all right so we have this part done now i want to show you something here currently this element here is not aligned it's not aligned in the center and we need to fix that so to fix that we need to make sure that all these elements like the background these shapes these icons this text they are all grouped and do, to do that let's use the shift and the control key to select them so i'm going to hold the control key click on the background first and because this icon is already a group i'm going to select it my hands are still on the control key i'm going to select it in the layers panel and also the features i think is also a group so i've actually grouped this already so so i actually have this two selected with a control key i have selected this two and i'm going to press ctrl j to group it again so I'm, i've nested a group inside a group that's what is actually happening so i'm going to name this like middle part and how do we center it we need to center it so press ctrl a now how does artboard active you just have to select the group you want to center and press ctrl a to highlight the whole thing you know that is going to bring you can see that there's this uh, check it like selection around the whole thing this works when they have the move to active that is going to bring out the two options bar and they're going to align them horizontal centers you know so once that is done anytime you use this tool like the control a is control a means select all everything in the artboard we need to deselect it this can be really frustrating if you forget to deselect it so To deselect you just have to press ctrl d to deselect so we have this part done now so let's move on but before we move on i want us to focus on this section here you can see that on the final design we have design you will love guaranteed let's move on to creating this but before we move on the contrast here is not large enough for me so i want us to fix that and to fix the contrast we're going to select the dark background shape we put on the image and just change it to let's say change it to 70 so let's go 70 and see so i think 70 works in this case and the framing of this in terms of that headline is also not dominant enough for me so i'm also going to fix that by making it a little bit big but to do that i need to make sure that i have all this text grouped so i'm holding a shift key and a control key and clicking on this three elements and I have them selected and I'm going to group them so control G to group them and I'm going to name this headline this way of working in Photoshop is really important because if you don't group your elements it's going to really get frustrating so now that I have it grouped I can actually enlarge it all together so I'm going to press control T to activate the transform control and just use this to enlarge it a little bit and the way I'm thinking now is, okay, so I need to enlarge it to not make it too small and not make it too big too. But the one rule is that I don't want my text to cover the face of my subject. Now, there's also a principle in design that you always want to pay attention to, which is alignment. You, you always want to make sure all the elements in your designs are aligned in some way, you know. Sometimes you can break the rules, but it's rarely the case. And when you are breaking the rules, you are also really intentional about it. But for now, we don't want to break the rules. Let's just bring out the rulers and just... I'm going to zoom in with Control Plus. And what I'm trying to do is... Let me just make sure something is aligned to this shape. So the headline, I'm going to bring it back. And with, the, with zoom in, select this type. So I'm aligning this headline text to this this shape here doesn't need to be really aligned so that we can keep it hanging but let's keep this two aligned yeah let's also try so one of the things whenever you are designing is that you want to experiment and see which one works better so i'm also going to just bring it here and align the whole thing here and see which one works better but again i feel this one works better than the first one which leaves the line hanging so I'm going to keep it this way for now. And let's focus on the love part. 
So let's bring in the lab logo and I got it from flaticons.com. I'm going to open the project files, the hats, drag it in and just put it here. So the next thing I need is I need to, let me just make it smaller. So I've taught you all how to resize with the transform control, so I'm not going to focus on that now. We need a circle. So in the tools panel, click on the shape tool, right click and choose the LAP tool. So the LAP tool works like the rectangle tool we used earlier on. So in the tools options bar, we actually need the stroke of this shape to be white and we need the fill to be none. So the fill is set to none and the stroke is set to white. And it's good because one thing with design, as, as I, I've always been saying, is consistency. So we need to also maintain that consistency when it comes to this line. So we're going to use the same stroke width over here. So I'm going to hold the shift and the option key. The reason why I'm holding the shift and the option key is because if I draw this without the shift and the option key, it looks skewed. But to fix that, if I hold the shift and the option key, I get a perfect circle. You know, I get a perfect circle. Now my hands are on the shift option and if I add the spacebar key, I can now pan around, you know. So you can start with the shift and the option key or the alt key on Windows. And once you add the spacebar key to it, you can actually start panning around. I wanted to try that and let's see how it works. You can just rewind. All right, so once this is done, let's focus on adding the text design you will love guaranteed how do we add this circular text around this font so to create the type that is circular you first of all have to select the type to make sure that you have the type to selected the first one the horizontal type two and make sure that you have an ellipse like this one active the way i drew this ellipse is by using the shape tool and drawing it and then it's like this so now that i have it active and i have the type tool active and i hover my mouse over it the, the cursor is actually going to change let me zoom in to show you so actually the cursor has changed you know so if i click it's actually going to take the properties of my the last font i used you know so i'm just going to type in the font i want and let me just change the color. Control A to highlight everything and change the color here. So what I have, let me zoom out and let me come here and see design you will love guaranteed. So what I have here is design you will love so let me just make it smaller so anytime i want to make it smaller i have to highlight everything again so control a to highlight everything then just use the tools options bar to make it change the font size so i'm going to make it six and also let's change this to bold so design you will love so i'm going to add a dot full stop okay i don't need to add a dot let's just add a space guaranteed so let me make sure that the spelling of guaranteed is is right guaranteed so there's a problem here the way the formatting of this is we want to separate this so i'm actually going to just drag around just this and press ctrl x just to cut that and now that i've cut that it's already on my clipboard so we are going to paste this later but for now let's just commit and use the move to and with the move to with this selected you can press ctrl t and you can actually rotate this make sure that it's rotated well and we want to add a guarantee down here but we want to add it not like that we want to add it we want it to wrap around it like that and to do that, select the type two again with the T key or come here and select the type two and make sure you have the ellipse selected again. And again, click here. So we are adding this 
on its own separate layer and press control V to paste it. But the issue right now is that this is going in the opposite direction. We want it to flip around it. Like you can see that in our final, this one, it looks different. So to have an effect like this, you need to select the path selection tool. And once you have the path selection tool selected, you can zoom in and let me just zoom into this part. And what you want to do is that once you target the lines, you click on it and you move your mouse inside, you know. So as you move it inside, it's going to go inside. As you move it outside, it's going to come outside. So you move it inside and you take it to a point where it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be down for now. We can just put it here where all the text is actually showing. And then we just select the move tool to commit. And now we can use the control T and just move it to where we want it to move, be moved and commit. And actually use the character panel to format this. And one interesting thing about Photoshop is that this element, this guaranteed is still in a circular form. So if you select, I want to select the uh, direct selection tool and you can see that there is actually a part here which controls, you, you can actually control the, the circular nature of this, of this, you know. But this is something you can do to finesse it to your liking. But for now, let's just accept modification and select the ellipse tool and let's make it smaller. Control T. Control T to activate the transform control and let's make it smaller like this. So we have something like we, we had at the beginning. But the only thing that I'm not seeing here is that the, the, the font is not well spaced. So I'm going to increase the tracking of this to 50 and even change the font weight to medium. Increase the tracking of this to 200, the guarantee to 200, and change the font weight to medium. And to increase the tracking of this, I think the limit here is just 200, but you can just enter the value you want or hover your mouse over this section, the VA section, and just drag it, you know, to even increase it further. But this is sort of clipped, so if you go further, it's going to be hidden. So I think this is okay for now, you know, and I feel like I need to control it, this wall. And to do that, I'm going to select the direct selection tool. And once you select that, you just drag it on top of this, and it's going to activate the anchor handles. And with the anchor handles, you can actually just move it and just make it look like you want, to, you want it to be, you know. So that is how to do these kind of things. It takes a little bit of time to make it look like you want it to look. But for now, I feel like this is okay. Let me just do bring this part inward a little bit. Just bring this inward a little bit. Okay. So accept modification. So now all we need to do is to add this dot here. And this dot here, they are normal circles that I added there. So to do that, select the shape tool and the ellipse tool and make sure that the fill, this time around, the fill is set to fill. And make sure you don't have any shape selected so that it doesn't change the properties of that shape. So I'm, I'm going to select just a text here just so that it doesn't affect any shape selected. Fill, click on the fill. Select the shape, click on the fill. So what I'm, I'm noticing is that I said that if you have, a, make sure you have a, a, a text selected. You don't have to make sure you have a text selected. Just select anything apart from a text or a shape so that we can actually add a new ellipse in here. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool and click on fill and click here, click on this color and click on stroke, set it to none. And I'm going to hold the shift key and draw a small circle. And now I'm just going to move it here. And this feels too big. 
So make it smaller and now hold the alt key to duplicate. So you hold the alt key to duplicate. So with this, you can see that we actually have something similar to this. And the difference here is, I feel like the difference between this and this is, this one, the spacing is a little bit too much. So let's just lower it to say 25, yeah. And even maybe lower the font size to 5.7. Lower this to 5.7. So design requires a little bit of finessing. So these things are stuff that as you are watching me, you can also start finessing it and playing around with it to achieve your own look. I'm going to increase the tracking of this more to see how that affects the image. So that is it for this section. I'm going to group this element. But first and foremost, make sure that the hat is centered. And currently, I'm not able to select the hat because the hat is beneath all these layers here. So you need to use the layers panel to select the hat and make sure it is actually on top of it. And select the hat and also the circle, like the ellipse tool. So I have these two selected. Now I can align it, you know. Once I have these two selected, I can just use the tools options bar and make sure that it's aligned. And with that done, I'm going to select this other element here and also this shape, the circle shape here. So I have everything here selected and I'm going to group it, group it and name it hat. Just give it a name. Yeah. So we have this also done. So let's look at this part here. And this part is quite interesting because it looks simple and it can easily be done by, let's first and foremost format the text here. So I'm going to remove everything that is not supposed to be here for now. Let me just drag this here. Let me just pull this here. Okay, so we have all the text which is supposed to be here. So I'm going to use the shift and the control key to select all and I have everything selected. So I'm going to choose one font size, which is seven, and make it medium. So that is a very smart way of working. Anytime you have a lot of text like this, you can format them together so that you don't have to do them one after the other. You know, so that will save you time. Lightening fast delivery should be here. We have. So I actually have this text duplicated, so I need to delete one. So I actually left one copy, which I'm supposed to bring in here. So pause and cancel anytime. That should be here. And the way I'm formatting this text is I've talked about all these things previously, so worry about how to do this. Let's bring in the icons. I'm just aligning them. So because we are operating in a smaller space, we have to bring some of the text in so that we can have more room for the icons. So I'm actually going to be operating on two lines. One of the things anytime personally I'm designing, I do is that every move I make, I do my best to repeat it. That is very key because if you're not doing that, your design will look disjointed and you don't want to do that. You want everything to feel visually cohesive. So that is a pro tip there for you. So now that I have it formatted, bring in the icons first and after that we will align them. So let's select all the six icons here. So the first one is this, the second one is this, the third one is this, the fourth one is this, the fifth one is this, and the sixth one is this. And I got all these icons from platicons.com. So because there are six icons, I have to check, I have to press enter or use the check mark six times and now i have all these icons here i'm going to hold the shift key and because it came in an ordered form i'm going to just hold the shift key and 
click on the last one they are all going to be selected Control T to activate the transform control and just make this smaller. So I have a lot of icons stacked on one on top of the other, but it doesn't matter. I just want to save time by doing all together and pressing enter. So now that I have them here, I'm going to use the layers panel to move them. So I'm going to select the paper from here and just move it, you know, and select the pause from here and just move it here select the print from here and move it here and i feel like the print this the, the sizing is a little bit smaller so i'm going to make it a little bit bigger by using the transform control and select the lightning and moving it here what again yeah so we have all these icons here so select the the quality yeah and moving it here and again, the same principles are apply alignment. So I'm going to select these two elements and make sure that they are aligned. Select these two elements and make sure that they are aligned. So the first one will align them to the left edge. Select these two elements, align them to the left edge. And I'm also going to make sure that the spacing between all these fonts, like all, all the icons and the, and, the, and the fonts, the type feels consistent in all the two so you're going to add a line here and some lines here like we have it in our final design so i'm going to select all these icons when it comes to selecting like this you need to be really careful you need to zoom in especially if you're using the auto select sometimes you want to check the auto select use that to select this you know use that to select this and now i can uh, center them so use the auto select in this case and just center them but after i'm done here i'll just uncheck the auto select because i don't need them so just use auto select and i can actually move this so one problem with auto select is that sometimes if you're trying to even move something and you don't target it it's actually going to deselect you know so just move it down a little bit now i'm going to uncheck the auto select now come in the tools panel right click and choose a line tool and with the line tool we want a black line so set the fill to black and the stroke to none make sure the stroke is set to none already okay so with that i'm going to hold the shift key but we need to set the weight of the line i want the line weight to be like two for now and let's draw it and let's see the thickness of the line so i think two is okay so we need two extra lines but make sure if you are drawing the two the second two lines you don't have this line active other than that it's going to add it to this line and you don't want that so i'm actually going to deselect this line by selecting let's say this logo and selecting the line in the tools panel here again holding the shift key just to make sure that everything is straight you know and just drag this here. I'm going to select the move tool and hold the alt key. I don't need to draw another line. I have one here already. So hold the alt key and just duplicate it. You know. So now I have these lines here. I'm going to select all these lines. Anytime you are drawing a line, you want to make sure that you set the, the weight of the line before you draw it. But there's a way to make this work. We are just going to lower the opacity because I just feel like it's too in our face. Once we have the three lines selected, we can lower the opacity, but there's a shortcut key for that. If you press 1, the opacity of this is going to be set to 10%. You can see that the opacity here changes to 10%. So let's say if you have this, this three shape selected and I press 2, it should change to 20%. If you press 3, it's going to change it to 50%. But because I've already activated this section, it's not allowing me to do that. So let me just use this and lower it to like 50 let me just enter 50 here you know so that is all for this part so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the auto select again and drag around it and control j to group everything and just name this features two so you can give it whatever name you want but now that i have it group i have to make sure auto select is not checked and with the feature tool selected the group is now active i cannot move it i'm going to press ctrl a to select everything on the canvas 
to be able to center the whole thing, center, align horizontal centers, you know, and move it up a little bit, you know. So that is how this works. And looking here, I can feel like this needs to come down. So the importance of grouping this is, is that now that I have it grouped, I can just move this a little bit down. And that is how this works. I feel like this image, we didn't position it well. So I'm actually going to press Control T to position this image well. You know, so this is how it should look in a final. Make sure you are not rotating it. This is how the image should be. And with that, I also have to make sure that this shape here, select it in the layers panel, Control T, and hold the Shift key and drag it to make sure it fills this. I know this, this is a lot of information, but the advantage of for you is that you are watching this on the comfort of your home, so you can pause it and just try following me one after the other, and I, believe me, you'll be able to do these things. Okay, so now that we have this, we also have a new problem. There's so much space here, and anytime you're designing, you pay attention to like the negative space that might, might be forming, and we need to push this down a little bit. And so I'm going to select the headline group and also push it down a little bit. And yeah, so with that done, what is left with is just a footer. And the way I created this is quite simple. In the tools panel, select the rectangle tool and make sure that the fill is set to for now let's set it to black the stroke is set to none and let's just draw a rectangle now that we have a rectangle in let's just change the color by double clicking in this square thumbnail here and just changing the color sampling this color you know so we have that done let's just select this text here so let me just enter an amount here for purpose of so i'm going to enter like two thousand dollars a month and it looks as if this font needs to be all caps and to change it to all caps, make sure that the font is active. And in the character panel, in the character panel, if you don't see this, go to window and character and just check the, this one, all caps. Control T to activate the transform control and let's make it a little bit bigger like we see it in the final design. And now, accept modification and let's change the weight of this to bold. Use the T key to activate the type tool. Or you can even change the font here to white. You don't have to go to the type tool. Just change the font to white. And let's just bring in the arrows you see in the final design here. So in the project files, you can see that this arrow, there's only one arrow because you're going to duplicate it. So just click it and drag it onto your artboard. And actually, let's make it smaller like this one and position it here and accept modification. So we need to lower the opacity of this arrow a little bit. So uh, this is where I taught you, you just press 4, it changes the opacity to 40. You can see that it changes to 40. If I press 5, it changes to 50. So you can just play around with it to see which one works best for you. And I'm going to hold the Option key just to duplicate it again here. And Control T to activate the transform control. And I want to flip it, you know. So once I have the transform control active, like I can see these bounding edges around it, all I have to do is just right click and just come down here and choose Flip Horizontal. And come here and accept modification. Now, anytime I'm doing something like this, let me zoom in and show you something. I always like using the rulers to make sure that things are aligned. So I'm just going to bring the rulers to the top edge of this, you know, and make sure that they are well aligned here. Okay, so the next, let me just zoom in. I'm going to select these three texts all together. Select the type two and click here. Make sure they are all selected and change the fonts to six. So now that I have it done, I'm just going to use the move tool to make sure they are well position 
And I have the three selectors, so I can actually use the alignment tool to align them. So now what I have to do is I need to bring in the, this icon, the check mark icon here. Let me zoom out a little bit. And with this, just bring the check mark here. And these ones are a little bit smaller. I'm just going to make it like this for now. So this needs to be smaller because if it's too big, it'll become too overwhelming. So I'm going to duplicate it two times. So hold the Alt key and just duplicate it. Hold the Alt key, just duplicate it. So now, again, anytime I'm designing, I always pay attention to the alignment rule. So here, this and this is not well aligned. So I'm going to use a ruler and just push it here. Use a ruler and push it here and select, select this, select this, select this. So anytime I'm selecting something like this, I need to make sure that I'm actually targeting because I'm not using the auto select because there are a lot of elements here that I actually don't want to select if I use auto select. So I have to use the shift and the control key to clicking on them to select them, you know. So selection in Photoshop is really key. Uh, it's, it's a really important uh, step if you don't want to get frustrated. So once this is done, like I'm just going to align everything to this so that everything fits within the frame. So that is all for the front side. And if you are still watching this and you've watched this to this side, I want to say congratulations because you've really done well. And by now, you should have most of the skills. I've said a lot of things and most of the things that I've shared with you, these are design principles and I personally used in my 10 years of creating designs, you know. So we are going to look at the back in the next section of this class. In this section, we are going to just focus on the back of the flyer. So this is how the back looks like. So we are going to be recreating this and it should be quite simple. So the first thing we want to do is we are going to duplicate this side here. Let me just make this smaller. It feels too big. You know? So we have this shape here. So I'm going to just group it and name this header. So by now you should know how to group an element and hold the Alt key and just drag it here. You know? Now the background should be filled with black. So I'm just going to use the shape tool. For now, let's use shape tool, set the fill to black and the stroke to none. Draw a black square around this. Select the move tool. And let's move this down here. It should be the, the last one. Now you can see that over here and here, the shape here is a little bit bigger than this. It's because over here, what I did actually is that I moved this here and I use the shape to make sure that the fill is set to white, I use the shape tool and I drew a shape on top here. So it feels bigger. So now if I move this one back, you can see that this actually feels bigger. So that's the same thing. Let me just delete this and just now that I have this here, just bring this back. Or oh, let me just put this. You can also put element in a group. I'm going to put this in this group, you know, open the group and make sure it's actually beneath all the shapes. That is a very important step. And anytime you do this, you can sometimes feel like your Photoshop is, is lagging. And this is obviously going to be this, depend on the speed of your machine. But currently, I'm using my laptop to record, so it's behaving a little bit funny. Just position this here. And what I need to do is, I still have the text here, but because it's black, we cannot see it. So I'm going to press the T key to activate the type tool and Click here to bring out this color picker, just sample this white. So now all that is left is just formatting this text. To format it, let's just start off with the heading. I'm just going to double click here, select this control X to cut. And I'm going to change the font size of this. So in the cursor panel, set this to 20. And let me change the weight to ultra. Let's do bold because I think we use bold throughout. So bold and let's set the tracking to negative 25. And now all we need is a line like this one. So to add a line, let's just use a line tool. And with this line, the stroke width looks like it's around three. Let's do three and see. So with the line tool selected, 
the way it's set to three, I'm going to hold the shift key and draw a line. Let's see. So this line is too thin. So let's double that to six. Now that we've done this, this feels okay. And now, again, with alignment rule, I'm going to just bring in the rulers, bring in the rulers here and make sure that everything that I'm doing falls within this frame. So that is a general rule when you, anytime you're designing. But before I even do that, let me just take it back a little bit and make this line a little bit wider because we have a lot of information to put here. So everything has to fit within this frame. But before, let me just group this, Control G to group, Control A to select everything, then center align. Control D to deselect. Anytime you press Control A, you have to press Control D to deselect. Other than that, you try moving it and it's going to behave funny. All right, so you need to add this text one after the other. I'm just going to click Control X to cut. I'm just going to fast forward this section because I'm just going to be separating this text on its own layers. Okay, so now that I have everything in here on its own separate layer, what this allows me to do is that I'm actually going to lock this layer and use the auto select and just drag it to select everything here. So with that selected, I can change the font of this all together. So I'm going to make everything here the same font. So I feel like 11 is fine. And let's change the tracking to 25. So click outside to deselect and select just this parts and align them to the left. So I'm going to turn off the rulers, drag it, make sure I have everything here selected. Sometimes in Photoshop, if you try selecting, like using the auto select, sometimes, for example, I tried using auto select to select this and it's actually selecting this image. So anytime I use the align left, it is actually not working and it's actually moving this image. So you want to make sure that you carefully watch through the selection. So I'm actually going to deselect this. So personally, that's why I don't like using the auto select because it sometimes gets really frustrating. And sometimes you have to go the hard way. And the hard way is by just unchecking auto select, you know, just uncheck it and just use the control or command and hold the shift key and just select all this, you know. Select, click on them one after the other with your hands on the control and the shift key. So now I have just this selected and I'm going to align them to the left. And I'm going to also distribute vertical centers. Hold the shifts and the control key again. What I should have actually done is I should have grouped that text because I will need that text again, which I didn't group it. So select this, align them to the left, distribute vertical centers, and I'm going to group it. So this is going to be text right and now that i have this i'm just going to hold a shift key and select this in my layers panel 
and name this text left. So in Photoshop, you really need more real estate because in terms of your screen size also matters because because the laptop I'm using, it has a bigger screen size. I have more room, you know, that can also affect your pace. So if you are working with a smaller screen size, you need to be patient with yourself. So with this done, let's add the lines. So with the lines, I'm going to select the line tool and I want to use a stroke weight of three and actually change the color of the line to this color. But we will do that later. So for now, let's just hold the shift key and draw a line, you know, and double click inside here and let's sample this color here. So now I'm going to hold the Alt key, drag it here. We're going to put the icons here. And sometimes when you're working in Photoshop, you need to think of how can I really be smart? Uh, smart in a way that you are being more efficient. It saves you time. And the way I do that is, for example, with this, instead of duplicating the lines, and after that added icons, I'm going to bring in the icons because the icons are basically going to be repeated. So I'm going to add this icon. This is the icon here. Hold the Alt Option key or the Alt key. I'm going to bring it here. It's actually black, so we don't see it. So let's change it, the color. Let's first of all set the opacity to 100%. Set, go to FX, color overlay, and let's set color to white. Okay. Control T. Let's make it smaller. So now that I have this here, all that I have to do is make sure that this one is well formatted with especially the line. And now I can just select the arrow and the line. We need to group them first. So let's just create a group because grouping them will also help you manage your layers well. I'm going to name it one. And now if I duplicate it, just rename it to so now I can select these two layers, hold the Alt key and duplicate it several times. You know, now I can select these two layers again, all these layers again. So I'm going to duplicate it four times. So anytime I'm duplicating, my hands is on the Shift key. Now I'm going to select everything here again. So these are like time-saving techniques in Photoshop that when you're working on like a large project where you have a lot of layers, you don't want to do stuff repeatedly. You know, you can just bunch them and just duplicate it. So now it left with, I think, this last four. So I've selected the last four layers and just drag them, making, making sure they are, they are well aligned. So this is, I think we are getting to the final stage. What I would normally do is make sure that everything here is well aligned. And the, the, the way I brought them in by holding the shift key, I already know that they are well aligned, you know. So let's just bring in this text here, this hat group here. And because I group them, I can easily hold the alt key and just drag it, and just put it here. You know, that is really going to control T to make it bigger. And that is it. And the last, I added this arrow and this dotted arrow here, which I got from freepick.com. So that this is where I got the arrow. So I normally search for geometric shape. So when I search for geometric shape, there are a lot of these shapes. So I, th I think I got them from one of these packs. And normally with these ones, you need to know Illustrator, but on this channel, I'm going to also be doing beginner course to Illustrator. So if you've not already subscribed, please do also subscribe. So with this, I'm going to I already have the, that shape added. So in a project files, let's locate that. I think that's this one. Yeah. So just put that here and make it a little bit smaller. And that is actually there to point to this tray. So with this one, I don't have to recreate them again. So with this, I'm coming to the first, the front, and just grouping these elements. So I'm going to select this from the front. So this is where you really need to zoom in. So I have, I've selected these three check marks. So make sure you zoom in and use the layers panel to shift key to select this three check mark. Use the shift and the control key to select. And I'm going to group them. So I'm going to name it just text. Just text, and now that I have it, I can hold the Alt key and drag it here. 
you know. But we have a problem. The icons are still black and the background is black. So to fix that, let's open the group and just add a color overlay just to the icons. So FX color overlay. I'm going to show you a time-saving technique here. So for example, I have this color overlay added and I don't want to do that for all of them. So to duplicate it, copy it on this two. I just have to hold the Option key or the Alt key and just drag it onto these ones and it's going to be automatically duplicated. Again, alignment rule, we need to make sure that all elements are aligned. So just hold the Control T to activate the transform control and make sure that it's well aligned. So I feel like this is all for this course on how to design a flyer in Photoshop. I hope this has been really helpful to you. I've talked about so many things and because this is more of a beginner course and if you are watching this and this feels a little bit too fast for you, please use the YouTube feature to slow the video down. Like there's this feature on YouTube. If you actually go to YouTube, you can actually slow the video down and you can watch at your pace and you can pause and rewind it. So that is all for this video. In the next section, we are going to look at several flyer design techniques and how you can do them in Photoshop. So in this section, we are going to look at how do you do that in Photoshop. So what that means is that we are going to look at a lot of flyer designs and I'm going to show you how to recreate those things. Actually, the most efficient way to do these tricks in Photoshop because most of you might be working on different kind of flyer like church flyer, party flyers, business flyers and a whole lot and I can't cover all these in this course. So I'm just going to take a look at some of the flyer designs that people have done and show you how to recreate these effects in Photoshop. So let's start off with our first flyer which is going to be this Halloween flyer. Let me just drag it into Photoshop and because I've already talked about the basics I'm not going to mention a lot of the things that I'm doing here so I'm just going to create an ad board. By the way if you're watching just this one this is part of a long course on how to create professional flyers in Photoshop. So if you're watching just this video please go and watch the full video to get a clear understanding of how Photoshop works before you come here. All right. So with that done, I'm going to recreate just this text here, you know, so how do we do this horror party Halloween? How do you do that in Photoshop? I'm going to duplicate this and create a new background, give it a fill of black so that we can see our text. And what they've done here is they've introduced contrast, horror party Halloween. So that is typographic contrast. So we need to type face. So I'm going to type horror party and use the move to I'm going to hold the alt key and duplicate it and type in the Halloween in all caps. So I'm not going to worry myself with the exact font they use. I'm just going to concern myself with the trick they are using, you know. So the fonts they use, this one looks like a bold font and I have a similar font installed, I believe. Let's see. So the main purpose of this video is just to show you how to do that. So I'm not going to concern myself with the font, particular font they use. But this font can easily be found. And let me just show you how to find fonts. There's this website called What Font Is This? So if you just Google what font is this, so this website can easily help you identify what font a design is using if you are able to crop just this part of the design and you upload it there. They're able to help you, but you just have to align it, make sure that it is straight. But I'm not going to look at that now for now. So I'm going to go with these two fonts because this is a script font. Let me see if I have a font called Brush. Yes, brush. Yeah. So I'm going to use this instead. So brush script empty. So we have our contrasts introduced and let's create the way the font is slanted. You can actually just use, for example, let's select the Halloween. Let's use control T to activate the travel control. And over here, I want you to set the V to minus five. Yeah, so that is how to create those kind of slanted fonts. Transform control again, and let's set this to minus five again. And they just brought it on top. And because there's contrast here, I'm going to change the color of this. Select the Halloween and click here and change the color for now to an orange color. And because there is contrast in the layers panel, bring the horror on top and actually make it smaller. So we are just trying to model this design. So 
because there's contrast you can actually still see the horror party here and how they created this here is they use the layer star i can show you how to create them from scratch but let me show you first how to leverage because in design or in when you're working you need to you want to save time right so if you come to google and you search for photoshop text layer style effects there are a lot of photoshop text layer style effects that you can actually download and use and most of them are actually for free so you just have to add free download to them but if you can also pay for it for example free pick they have a lot of these that you can actually sign up for a free account so i'm going to first of all show you this trick then i'll show you how to recreate it secondly so looking at this effects that they've done here you can see that it's just a normal gradient with a normal stroke outline to it let's look for something that has that similar in free pick so i actually have a free pick account so i've just logged in and i'm going to scroll through to find one So I actually didn't get the exact one there, but I, I'm going to work with this and just remove, let's say the 3D effects that they've applied to this. So I'm just going to download it and work with this just to show you how it works. So it has been downloaded and let me just open the folder, open the PSD file. The way the free pick version works is you have to actually replace your text. So let me just replace it here. Replace it, double click in this square thumbnail to replace the text. So you can see that I have, I've been able to save it and it's looking some way, but I, I'm just doing this just to show you how to get these stuff if you are short on time. But if you know how to use the Photoshop really fast, you can create these effects really quickly, you know. But with this one, you have to go in there and maybe turn off the 3D and do a lot to it to make it like like how you actually want it. So now I'm turning off all these layers and see maybe if I can work with this. But that is one approach. But the other approach is just to create everything from scratch. So with this, the first thing I need is in the layer star FX, I'm going to add a gradient overlay. And with a gradient, I have to make sure that opacity is set to 100%, of course. And the basics the gradient basic is set the color here and we're just going to sample the color they've used so you have to know the colors you are you are going to use for your design you know so this is the sort of gradients they've created here and the angle of the gradient i think is set to around this side so there is the deep orange on top and the down is just light yellow and there's a stroke added here so i'm going to add a stroke to it so add a stroke and change the color of the stroke to yellow and i think the position is set to inside so you can actually see how it was being created and the gradient stroke size i think is set to around three and the stroke is actually also a gradient so to add that you come to the fill and you set it to gradient and you click on the gradient editor and double click here and the top is set to yellow so let's sample this one so let's change the top to yellow more of an orange yellow and the down is set to this orange color you know and the way this works is basically the same so now we just have to flip it click on it and let's reverse the stroke gradient so now we've reversed it and now everything is showing the top is showing we can actually control the angle of it if we are not getting that effect so you can see that i feel like we are losing the intensity of our gradient here and to fix that i'm going to add another stop here and just make that this color so we can add more gradient stops and also change yeah so that's how this effect was created 
and because there's no background you cannot actually see the full effect let me just double click on the gradient again so it's all about just playing with the colors here let me just change this into more of a red orange so you can see how this effect was created you know so with this if i add a background this is just an image they use a background image they use and for context let, let's just add a background image i think i actually want a dark image so let's say this image let's just use this for context let's use this so i'm going to save this and drag them here and enlarge the background take this a little bit up so now you can see that what they've done is that they added a, a max to it and with a max i think with this i can simply use the brush you know use the b key to activate the brush to and just use the right bracket key to increase the brush size making sure that my the caps lock and lower the opacity of the brush and now if i paint black on this it's going to hide this part of this image you know so that is how this effect has been created and if i'm to work on this of course i'll get the same exact image and but i just quickly want to show you how this effect was created all right so let's move on to the next okay so the next thing is how do i do this in photoshop so what i'm going to focus on is this is sort of a, a postcard flyer which has some text here and octagonal like he hexagonal shapes here and with an image clip inside how do you do that so i'm going to show you how to quickly do that so i'm going to create an artboard and with an artboard created i'm just going to duplicate this and just make this like sort of the size of this let's say this is the size of the postcard just add a background just sample this color and just add a background and i'm not going to add the text i just want to show you how to add this hexagonal shapes right click and select the polygon tool and the size of this is six so i'm just going to in the choose options bar set this to six and we don't need this to be rounded so we just hold the shift key and the option key to draw a perfect hexagon and i'm actually going to change the color to white for now and with that done i'll just position that here it's like it's look like this and hold the alt key to duplicate this and make this smaller now i don't need to hold the alt key but just sample this so this is actually a gradient i can see that this is a gradient but it's in place beneath this so the visual trick here is repetition you know that it looks as if the logo has this hexagon inside so the person is trying to echo that uh, shape throughout the design so that is also a, a nice design trick and i can see that the shape of this hexagon is pointed up so i need to change the angle of this put the control t to activate the transform control and just change it to help me angle it up i'm going to use the ruler to turn it on and just drag the ruler in here so that if i press a control t and i'm angling it i need to make sure that both the top and the down is actually straight so this is a very key part of this you don't want your shape to look slanted it can be but i feel like this trick works best if it's straight you know so i'm going to bring it down here and put the alt key and duplicate this make it smaller bring it here actually make it a little bit bigger so that is how they've actually created this and all i have to do now is just look for an image of a skyline okay so you let's let's do this okay so with this image downloaded i'm just going to bring them in just to show you how this works so bring this image on top and we are going to just create a clipping mask so with it on top i'm going to press enter to assert modification and hold control option j to create a clipping mask and now that i have it clipped i feel like this image there's not enough white space here but that's the power of like i use uh, photoshop generative ai to fill so if you are not using the paid version of photoshop you can't do that but let me just show you for those of you who have paid version of photoshop how to extend this image and i'm going to easily do that by opening the smart object and turning off this padlock and using the c key to activate the crop tool which is here just enlarging it like this and now now that i've enlarged it i'm just going to use the marquee tool and just select this part of the building and make sure i have in the window contextual tax bar is actually open and just click on generative fill and generate and the photoshop is going to generate a new fill which is going to look really seamless 
all right so the photoshop has given us three options let me just hide this for now this is first option second option third option so i, I like the third option better so i'm just going to uh, flatten this image because i need to do that before i can save it and just save it okay so now if i come back here now the image should be able to scale properly and all i have to do is also to add another image of a building or whatever here you know and clip it control option j or control alt j on windows and now that i have these two image all i have to do is to add a stroke to 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 this this to these shapes and to add a stroke select the polygon to i'm going to select the polygon to and go to fx and add a stroke and currently I have my stroke is actually a gradient so i'm going to set this to a, a normal color fill and click on the color and just change it to white and the stroke width for now i'm going to set it to four and i'm going to duplicate this stroke effect to the other layer by holding the option key and just dragging this here so that is how this effect was created and there's no it's not rocket science it's quite simple but i just have to make sure that this shape is actually everything is in the same orientation so it's all angled the same way so that is how this was created in photoshop let's move on to the next one all right so in this section i'm going to look at how do we do this in photoshop so this effect is is doable in photoshop and i'm going to show you quickly how this is done so just turn this into an art board and enlarge this and for now i'm just going to create a, a new layer and just sample this background and put it here and for the text just friday is just a normal text with a script font so i'm not really going to focus on that with a script font so you can just look for a script font and do that that can easily be done so let me just just do a normal script font that is not exactly what they have done there but the focus of this is actually how to create that slanted text they have there so i'm going to just get something here for now to have sort of something to work with so let me just change the color of the just to yellow you know let me use the eyedropper to to change this to yellow and just bring this up on top of this so the next thing is the dj nations and the dj walker so with the dj let's add the text for the dj so with the type 2 t to activate the type 2 dj nation i'm using bibas noir a very tall condensed font so let me just change the color to this pink color and to create this slanted effect that they have here all they did was Control t and right click and you can't see the effect because we need to first of all convert this into a smart object so right click and let's convert this into a smart object and now that is converting to a smart object just Control t and we can use the perspective to to actually change the perspective of this you know but which can sometimes be difficult because when you are changing the perspective you need to give photoshop some context so this is what i would normally do with the control t and i'll use actually the distort tool instead of the perspective tool because with the distort tool i can actually distort this image the way i want it so that is how the so one tip that i'll normally do if i want to create something exactly i'll just put this, this shape on this and maybe lower the opacity of this so that i can get the same effects if that's the effect you want to create for maybe your party flyer or whatever you are trying to do you know place it the way you want it to be and one good thing is that because it's a smart object we can easily duplicate it and open this smart object i can actually enlarge this using the shift command to enlarge it and maybe draw a shape around it like a rectangle shape around it so that we can give it that border we have in our in, the, in our final design so we draw a border around it and just change the fill to zero and just add a stroke to it so a stroke color of yellow and let's decrease the stroke width you know and place this in the center and that's one advantage of working with the smart objects and once i save it and press ctrl w to close it you can see that now we actually have the stroke added to it so if that's the effect you want you can you can do that let me open it and just move this there a little bit 
and now just to duplicate this effect because it's a smart object i can easily do that by right clicking and choose new smart object via copy if i don't do it that way and i just duplicate a smart object the name that i change is going to also change for both smart objects so i need to use the new smart objects via copy and just add the dj worker and just move it here and with that right, control t to activate the transform control right click and just use the distort again to distort this to the way i want it again anytime i want to copy uh, an effect exactly what i'll do is i'll just bring the on it and that is actually the best way to learn because once you get the fundamentals you can just play around with it to match the look and feel you are trying to uh, go for you know so that is how to get this kind of effect so now if you bring in your images in everything is going to look really nice and seamless all right so let's move on to the next one so in this one i'm going to show you how do you create this curved shape and also how do you format a text like this in photoshop because some of you you might be working on business flyer and you want to create this kind of curved shapes and they are actually easy to create in photoshop and to do that let me just turn this into an artboard and I have another artboard here so to create this sort of curve shapes i think what they've done here you can actually use the pen tool to do that you can even use the shape tool so let me show you how to use the shape tool the ellipse tool and with the ellipse tool because there are two color here one is white one is blue if i draw an ellipse like this and let's say i change the color of this ellipse to white all i have to do is to create a new layer beneath it and use the paint bucket to sample whatever color you want to use beneath it sample that and add it so now all you have to do is to control the top ellipse and to control it you are going to use the direct selection tool and the direct selection tool you can actually finesse the shape to however you want it that is one way you know that is not the only way that is just one way to creating this kind of shape one easy way is also to use the pen tool you know which is also very easy to use but for now let's just stick with this one and there's also this light blue layer here and the way that was created was they duplicated this elect tool and with that duplicated that becomes now the down layer and double clicking in this layer square thumbnail just sample this blue and dragging it down here you see the way they, they you move it so it becomes like it's pointing to something and now all we have to do is for us to also add our gradient to it it looks as if the gradient has been added to it so go to gradient overlay and click on the editor and let's start off with the blank black and white gradients so it starts with a dark blue sample this the dark blue and it should end with a light blue you see something of that nature is how they created this effect and i think they, they duplicated this shape so i'm going to duplicate the top this shape and actually turn off the gradient on that and change the color to white so now they have three shapes one a white shape the middle one is a blue shape and the down one is so if i move this up i can't actually see because there's no image here let me just bring an image in here so that we can actually see the effect let me add this building image here so what i'm seeing now is that i'm not able to get this you see there's this white line here and the way they got that i think is by adding a stroke effect so let's go to fx with, the, with this shape let's go to fx and add a stroke to it yes they did that by adding a stroke to it and increase the stroke width and change the color to white and you can actually separate a layer effect for, for example if, if i want to separate this stroke from this to become its own layer so that i can control it with this ellipse tool selected or ellipse layer selected i go to layer and come to layer star create layer a pop-up is going to show and click ok so i think the problem is that not all layers can be replicated in a way so we just have to stick with this for now so that is just sort of how this curvy shapes was created there's also another way to create it which is also quite simple let me just delete all this and to do that you can use a normal rectangle tool like this you know this is another way to create these shapes you know let me just bring that on top and to create this curve shape 
press Control T to activate the transform control. Right click and choose warp. And with that, I can you can just change or control the nature of this to get this kind of shape. And now all you have to do is, if this is your background, you change this to the background color. You know, and whatever you have to do, duplicate it. Control J, change the color to this. You know, so there are many ways of killing the same cut, but it all depends on which one you are comfortable with. You can also do this with a pen tool, but for now, I'm just going to stick with this. The next thing I'm going to show you with this one is this text. And what I've done here is really beautiful. And most beginners, they make a mistake of whenever they are formatting text, they break some alignment rules when it comes to typography. So you can see that. Let me just explain to you what is going on here. If I draw the rulers here, you can see that they've sort of align everything here so that is sort of a typographic technique sometimes when you want to create a more of a professional vibe and organized look that is what you do and because some of the text is bigger and some is smaller for example your neighbors bought solar with us they've broken it down and one of the things with design is that variety create engagement so what that means is that because the solar variety your neighbors was one text which is smaller but it's bigger and it's a different color and solar with us is another color which is also a great it sort of create engagement so i'm not going to show you how to do this text because it's it's quite simple as you add the text you add all of them on their own layer you let me just <laughs> give you sort of the brief but i don't want to make this video too long so that's why i'm moving a little bit faster duplicate this so but so every with us so all you have to do now that you have this is just bring out the rulers you know and make sure that you have the rulers to the beginning and the end and now you can just use the control t to activate the transform control and just enlarge it to the size where everything is sort of framed in a rectangle like we have it in our final design and once you are done you just have to change the colors to the colors that gives you that visual engagement or visual variety as they have here and you can see that whatever they are doing here they are playing with the logo colors so when it comes to design or branding you have to stick with the brand colors that is also one key so that is how this was created let's move on so i'm going to show you how this effect was created and basically it's just this part of where the speakers they've been framed in this and this this here and also this line here and to do that let me just add an ad board so that let me just draw an ad board like this and duplicate this and give this a black background for now like a dark background use a paint bucket to just click here make sure we are on the same page so the way this was created is first of all let's draw a rectangle and the rectangle looks like this of course it should look like this and let me just give it a color double click in this square terminal to give it a white color so that we can see it so first of all let's add a stroke to it so there's a stroke added to it so fx stroke and the stroke fill is gradient and they've added a gold gradient to it so once i click on the gradient editor i can actually start with a basic like start over here i'm, go I'm going to zoom in to change it to a dark gold and the next stop double click here and change it to a light gold you know and let's see what we have here let's increase the stroke width so that we can actually see what we are doing all right so they have something like this here but before we even move on let's look for an image of a portrait of a lady on google Okay, so I'm looking for some headshots here, which we can just use. So I'm going to bring this in to Photoshop on top of this. And I need to clip this to what we have there. So press enter, control or command alt J to clip it. So now that it's clipped, you can see that one of the principles of design is what they have here is that although maybe the designer who did this flyer the the picture they gave him was pictures with different backgrounds but to unify the design the designer cut out the background 
so that the background looks consistent so this is also one thing that you can also do anytime you are designing for example if this woman's background is pink or the other person's background is maybe he's standing behind a sea and the other person's background is standing maybe on a white background it's going to make your design looks clouded i'm going to open this and just use the photoshop object selection to just drag around this and it's going to select this and i can just cut out the background and with this all my elements their backgrounds are going to be cut let me just bring them back in here i'm actually going to delay this and get a cliffy mask again with control option j and all i have to do is just to make sure that the background of this is the same as the background of this and the way this was created this side is i think he added a shape to this so it is by using the pen tool or you can even use the triangle tool you know select a triangle tool for now you let's set the fill to uh, any color but before you draw any shape make sure you don't have any shape here selected and that is actually going to change the color so with the triangle tool let's i feel like triangle tool is going to be like a lot of work let's use the pen tool so with a p to activate the pen tool make sure that this is set to shape and the fill is set to a color and the stroke is set to none and now we can just draw you know a shape here you know and let's take it up because you can see it so now the challenge becomes how do we make sure we unify this and this and to unify it i feel this is quite simple but it depends on your level of photoshop skill so now that I have the shape here, we are going to add a gradient to this. So the way this gradient was added is FX gradient overlay. And I'm going to add a gradient that sort of conforms to this shape. So double click on the first stopper, sample this color. Double click on the second stopper and sample the color here. You can see the way the gradient was created. You know, so that is basically how they did that. And all you have to do afterwards is just hold the shift key and group them and select all and group them and just duplicate it four times or how many times you want. And then you replace the images of the different authors. And looking at this section, it was also created with a pen tool. And by using the pen tool, you can really create nice custom shapes. So with the pen tool selected, P for pen tool, make sure that this is set to shape and the fill you can leave it as it is now just select a dark shape and just draw maybe from here to here and it goes up like this and like this so make sure anytime you're using the pen to make sure you close it and now because this is the same color we can't actually see it but that is what we want we just have to add a stroke to it fx stroke you know and with a stroke we're going to add the same stroke we added here uh, if you can you can add it you can just come here into the group like here and i'm going to hold the alt key and duplicate this on this you know but make sure that this shape so i'm using the transform like the direct selection to drag in here and just making sure this is it's not hidden because if i review all this shape you can see that this is how it looks like but some part is actually hidden so that is how to do this sort of uh effects in photoshop let's do one last one then we will continue this in a whole different section please do me a favor by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if this video is helpful and please share it with anybody uh, who you think this video will be helpful to and also leave a comment below let me know if you have any specific challenge and i will personally reply you back okay so let's select one last one let's do this particular effect where if you want to sort of give your text some breaks and to sort of visually communicate something i don't know why the designer did that but i just want to show you how you can create this in photoshop so let's select the artboard tool and i'm going to just draw an artboard here duplicate this add a new artboard for now i'm going to add a background and give the background color a green you know and just add the text so i'm just going to do the back back i'm not going to do the back to school for now just the back change the font to let's say montserrat enlarge it 
So for now, let's just change the colors individually of the letters to these colors. The first one is red, the second one is yellow, and the third one, just clicking and just selecting the colors. And this is blue. And it looks as if sort of a texture has been added to it. I'm going to show you how to do that too. All right, so with this two sort of separate this i can see there's a lot of elements going on here but the way i'll fix this is first of all let's just duplicate our text so that we have one text on top and the other text beneath and let's turn off the top one and the down one let's add a layer marks to it you know a layer marks to reveal and hide some part of it and with the layer marks added let's select the pen to and change the options to part and i'm going to draw the parts that is starting from here to here to here to here and here and click on selection click ok and with a black as my foreground color option backspace we just have to make sure that the selection is still on and turn on the the top layer the text that we duplicated and just add a max to it so now with the max added to it if i move it up you can see that now we have this break effect and all that is left is just to move it you know to skew it a little bit and now they've added some sort of a, a stroke to it so to add a stroke select the down text fx go to stroke and i'm going to set the stroke size to two and the stroke position to a center and change the fill type to color and change it to white and they've also added some drop shadow here so let's add a drop shadow and you can actually control the drop shadow by just moving it here let's lower the distance here you know let's actually lower it lower it like this okay so I feel like this is like something that we've done there all we have to do is just to hold the alt key and duplicate this effect on top there and the last thing that i feel like they've done is they added a, a texture to it and so i'm going to go to free pick and look for i think it's a wall texture wall texture yeah son of this sort of rough wall texture so i'm going to use this for now this sort of rough raw texture use this okay so our texture is done downloading let me just drag them into photoshop you know so i need to clip it to the, the top shape control alt j clip it here but before i need to just desaturate it you know i need to desaturate it so desaturate it let me just open the smart object and press control shift u to desaturate and save it control s and control w to close it and so now that i've desaturated it all i have to do is to just play around with the blending modes you know so play with the blending modes and the texture might not be the same as what they've used but my main goal for this video is just to show you how to create this effect so you just have to look for a similar texture you know you get what i mean you just have to look for a similar texture so i'm going to lower the opacity to 50 percent and also duplicate this texture and put it on top of this and also control alt g to clip it to the top one so that it's been applied to the whole thing so i'm just going to group this and name it back so that is the same thing can do with the school you just have to change the fonts there so that is how this effect was created i can see that this texture needs to be moved up here so that is how this effect was created in photoshop Have you ever tried creating a design and after you are done creating the design your work or whatever you are creating looks not that good or looks ugly in this video or in this section of this class i'm going to share with you the most important things to focus on when you are designing so this comes from my 15 years of experience designing every day for clients and some of the simple advice i'm come to give you are some of the things that i live by personally to make my designs look pretty and make them look eye-catching 
and good. What I'm come to share with you will make designing actually effortless. So without wasting my time, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to share with you is to know your story. Before you design anything, know your story. What does know your story means? Every design is meant to tell a story. And if you just even Google the meaning of a story, like if you ask Google, what is a story? So this is just a generic definition of a story. A story is about how the things that happen affect someone in pursuit of a difficult goal and how that person changes internally as a result. So you can see that there's somebody involved and there is a goal involved. And also there is a change involved. And also it happens in a setting. So what am I saying? Albert, you're talking about design. What does a story have to do with like being good at design? It has everything to be good at design because when you are designing, even let's say for a client, even for yourself, you have a message and that message is to a specific audience. And normally, and most of the time, the message is to sell a transformation that, for example, maybe let's say if you are selling a product, you are trying to tell the target audience that if you buy this product, it will take your life from here to here. So basically what the design is basically doing is selling a transformation. It's selling that, okay, if you get this thing, your life will become this, you know. So you need to sort of understand the story, you know. Sometimes it's a service, like a service business that you are designing for. You need to fully understand it. That will help you actually remove every clutter out of the way. Remove every embellishment. Because sometimes we try to make something what is not. And the reason why sometimes when you are designing or when we are designing we do that is because we don't understand what is the main story who are the target audience what is this message trying to what is this company what is the goal what are they trying to achieve with this message and what will the target audience get from this message basically understanding that will change your approach to design it will help you understand so many things The second point is create a focal point. It's to help you understand what is the focal point. Because when you are designing, you are presenting a lot of information for an audience. You need to understand what is the most important thing. What is the second most important thing? You need to understand what matters most to the audience. And I'm going to use some of my projects to sort of give you a brief understanding of what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you. So this is sort of a postcard that I did for a client on 99 designs and looking at this postcard the focal point is clear this company basically does window cleaning so you can see that the whole background is photos one focal point image and you can see that even with make spring beautiful i've also highlighted the beautiful i want you to focus on like beautiful how beautiful your window glasses are going to look and understanding what is your focal point and even over here oklahoma's premier cap appeal people you can see that i've highlighted the premier cap appeal and this is not done accidentally and sometimes I, I see most designers they try to highlight everything they try to make everything stand out it's probably because you don't understand what should be the focal points and it all starts with the first point you know your story so know your story helps you understand what should be my focal point in a design? I'm going to show you some example here. So for example, with this one, don't have a plumber. When it comes to focal point, you also have to understand that when you are creating a design and you are trying to, for example, if you have a lot of text, you need to know your focal point to be able to prioritize. So here, the ways are not much, so it's easier. You know, don't have a plumber. That is basically the focal point. It's a question that they are asking, you know. And for example, if I open Photoshop, let me just open Photoshop and just try and show you so let me just create some shapes here so let's say if you are designing and this is your canvas you don't want all your elements in the design to look the same you know you need to differentiate create a clear focal point what do you want you need to guide the view of your audience you need to be able to say that this is where they'll look first this is where they'll look second this is where they'll look third and you can only do that by understanding how to create a focal point and how to guide your viewers eye through the design so with this one clearly if i'm to arrange this i'll do this so this is big big medium so let's say this is medium and this is going to be small so in this composition it's clear that this should be the focal point this this big circle should be the focal point and this should be the second focal point and this should be the third focal point and there are different ways to create a focal point as i said this is just size you know and this also relates to the principle of contrast in design 
Contrast means big, small. So like here, there's huge contrast. The contrast in size. You can also create contrast or you can create a focal point by using color or value, like in terms of making something very dark, you know, and that stands out. So with this one, let's say if this three, let's say, let me go back. Let me create a lot of them here. And let's say if I have all of these things in a conversation and I want to create a focal point, I can just use color by just making one of them just red, you know and that stands out so you need to understand how to create a focal point by using some of this principle like color you can also create a focal point by even using space at your advantage let's say you have a lot of this element and you want to create a focal point let me just go back let me make this very small and let me just delete some of this sometimes you can use white space in design white space is basically where nothing is so white space does not necessarily mean the color white it means that where there's no elements like so white space can be black can be blue just that a space that's where it helps the viewer focus so these are different techniques you can use to create a focal point so now this small circle stands out and able to even stand out more even if you change the color to a different color because there's so much white space around it and i'm just going to use some of again some of my works to show you for example with this one there's a clear focal point here car wash that is the, the main hierarchy in terms of hierarchy. I wanted to look at that, that first. So car wash 3% off. You are awesome. So you can see that there's a clear focal point. And you can also use shapes to create focal points. You can see that sometimes looking at this design, I could have just placed the logo here, but I use these lines here, these shapes here. That is all pointing to the logo. So you can use arrows, shapes to create focal points. Again, let me just show you this design here. And this is actually a postcard. And the clear focal point is changes. So this changes everything. But I've made the changes very bold. You know, there's so much contrast between the changes and everything. You know, so that is one thing that I want you to carry along. If you're watching just this video, this video is part of a long video on how to create awesome graphic designs using Photoshop. So if you've not watched that, please go and watch the full course. It's going to be very much value to you. So let's move on. So the next advice or the next thing I want you to focus on whenever you are designing is to keep your design simple. And it's that's a case principle. Keep it simple, stupid, like that's a case principle. And this is very much important anytime you are creating a design because in everything in life, simplicity always wins. Looking at some of these ways that I've created for this client, you can see one common theme. And looking at this, for example, they look very, very simple. And I feel like this all boils down up into the first point here that you have to know your story. Looking at this design, for example, let me just use this as a case study. The main reason why I could keep this design simple is because I fundamentally, I understood what the story of the client is to be able to communicate that in a very simple way. So keeping it simple, I can't say just keep it simple, but keeping it simple is rooted in the foundation of knowing your story having a clear understanding so sometimes that also requires sometimes you doing your research you know if somebody has given you something to design for let's say a book cover you need to actually go and read the book understand it to be able to communicate it because basically design is visual communication you are trying to communicate something so you, if you've not done any research if you don't have any deep insight you can't communicate things clearly and that brings me to this point that douglas davis said something in his course on domestica uh, creative strategy the business of design uh, i'll put a video a link to that course here and he said something that really struck me he said insight is the gold we dig so that means like in, a, in that course when he said that he struck me that means that insight is actually good when it comes to visual communication because if you have deep insight on the subject you are actually designing or the message you're actually communicating is good and it helps you communicate you ask yourself what is the most simplest way to actually communicate this and looking at this design for example what i just used is the visual metaphor the visual trick of move over i just placed the author of this podcast in between and just use that to communicate the message with a simple background with sort of a vignette effect to communicate the message so keeping it simple look, looking at this one too is very simple no fancy background one of the things that i see a lot of beginners if you're watching this course and don't worry yourself with what background should i use what color should i use just try and for example if you are designing for a brand stick to the brand colors if there's no need to use image or a background don't go and download fancy background images from freepick and use them some of them are really not necessary you just have to keep 
things really simple and present to the client and most of the times these things are what they really want so with this one so you can see that that simplicity runs across and it's founded on the first two knowing my story having the focal points helps me sort of keep things simple and go straight to the point So the next thing I want to share with you is on typography. Anytime you are designing, try as much as possible not to use too many fonts. You know, when it comes to typography, for example, let me just use this design for example. There's, I used only one font throughout and it's because the, the font was even influenced. So this is a pro tip. Anytime you are designing, you have to first of all use the brand font. And sometimes somebody, maybe a friend will send you a design. He wants you to design something for him or her. And maybe there's a logo he used. Most of the times, you just have to look at the logo and try to borrow like the look and feel of the logo. And I do understand that some logos are really terrible. So you just have to ask the person what emotion I try to evoke with this design. If the person says he wants it to be simple and clean, modern, you just have to choose. This is a simple sans serif font I use throughout. And what I did with typography is that I use color to create differentiation. I use different font weights. So here I use different font sizes to create also differentiation. You know to create different levels of hierarchy in terms of where the viewer should read first and second so but preferably stick with just two fonts don't use more than that that is really not going to help you i use the same one font star but with one slanted and i just wanted this design to, to convey that energy you know so that's why this when you want to convey energy you can use slanted fonts you can just italize it or just lines that are slanted to convey that energy i just want to show you there are some cases where you want to use a lot of fonts like let's say looking at this flyer for example you can see that i have two fonts here this is a, a condensed font and this is these are all sans serif fonts but i'm going to tell you why i even use this font for in the first place i wouldn't have used this font if wasn't because there were so many information that I had to put on this flyer and using this condensed font helps me make it bold. Sometimes when you are designing and you are using a normal font, this is what I mean by normal sans serif font. Because those font stretches, it fills up the space, but this is a condensed font. So I just had to use this condensed font because I have limited space. So that is a trick there. Sometimes if you want to see something that you have a tight space, you know, but you want to be bold, that is the way to go. You want to use a condensed font. And with typography to always know what the focal point is and try to highlight it. Here, I wasn't just trying to highlight anything. I think we handle removing anything. I just want to play with variety. And in design, variety creates engagement. So when it comes to typography, you also want to know what is the emotion you are trying to evoke and the look and feel of your design. So sometimes if you are designing for somebody, you need to ask the person, what emotion do you want this design to evoke? If the person says, okay, you want the people to take action or you want it to be bold. So that is where you want to look for bold fonts. You can simply just Google bold fonts and you go to Google Images. There are a lot of bold fonts, alternative that you can choose. If the person says you want the design to look elegant, so you can just search for elegant fonts and there are so many elegant fonts but you just first of all have to really understand that okay there are so many elegant fonts but you want to understand which one would help you in convey your message especially if there's so much let's say if you are designing a flyer and there's so much copy you cannot really use these types of elegant fonts because these types of elegant fonts are really difficult to use and we use them like sparingly and looking at this poster for example the everything is more of an elegant font i and i use it just once you know sparingly so you want to know when to use that and when not to use that so and normally with this type of script font we use them to create contrast and because we use them to create contrast we can use them as a body copy it is going to be extremely hard and The next thing that I want you to focus on anytime you are designing that I've learned over the years is with color. Anytime I'm designing, I don't worry about color. It's probably because I've been doing this for so many years. And I think the thing that I want to share with you about color is, first of all, if you are giving a logo from a client, just sample the colors from the logo. So looking at this design, for example, I just use the client's brand colors. Looking here, look at the brand colors. I just stick with the brand colors. If you see me use red or yellow, I use them sparingly and I don't use too many colors. So 
always be watchful for that just use the brand colors so this is the brand color this orange and this blue i use the brand colors here the same way i use the brand colors sometimes you are working on something that you don't have a logo or something to work with maybe you have an image and you have to design ar around that image and with that i'm going to show you a trick that you can use to work around that so let me just look for an image on my desktop here just to show you so let's say this image of a, this dog and i want to design something around this image what i would recommend you do is that you pixelate this image first you go to filter and you go to pixelate and you go to mosaic and you can increase the cell you know or decrease the cell and there are a lot of color palettes here that you can actually sample use the eyedropper tool to sample these colors and you have a lot of colors to work with the dog is actually the focal point or it's going to be the focal image you can any color you choose from here will, will, will become harmonious and there's a lot but that is all i can say for now on color there are a lot of courses out there that you can actually watch let's talk about contrast so contrast is also one key important thing anytime you are designing if you want to become a great designer i once heard one mentor said the secret to great design is contrast i didn't understand that then but now i do because if you understand contrast your designs will be very good because as human beings we see with contrast we only see things that are odd like okay this is different so i pay attention to it that's why people do different hairstyles people dye their hair because they want attention they want people to look at them so knowing how to create contrast in the design is very key so contrast is big and small so looking at this podcast cover for example here i've made a move over very big and the podcast small in here and because it's very small there you still pay attention because it's small it's different and the big is also very big that's the focal point over here understanding contrast okay i need to make the car wash big you know so big contrast is big and small or light and dark to try to mix those kind of bold moves one mentor again said that the difference between a beginner and an amateur is that a beginner wants to play safe he wants to make something similar like maybe if you are putting images he makes the images the same but a pro he makes a bold move looking at this design i made a bold move i could have just used all their images I could have just used all their images on the front page of this postcard but i just chose one and made it fill all the space you know that is a bold move so that is like contrast big try to think like how do i create that impact there's no in between with contrast there's a lot our contrast there's color contrast look at here I've, don't have it's black and it's red try so to create contrast there with color and when it comes to contrast you can also use like space as i showed you before just create space around something a lot of space around something that draws the eye so i think contrast is all about how we see it has to be different and it has to draw the eye you know and anytime you're designing and let's say a client or you want a design to be eye-catching you want to make sure that design there's a lot of contrast there it's not flat these things that i'm sharing with you these are things that i'm just saying them out of my years of, of working as a graphic designer so it might come off like i'm just talking but if you watch this video again and again and as you continue in your graphic design career you'll get a lot of deep insights from this video and i hope that this will be a great help to you the last one is like images whenever you are choosing an image you want to pay attention to a lot of things the lighting of the image and there's this thing called the rule of third so with the rule of third let me just look for an image just to show you i think photographers they understand that rule of composition and as a designer you also have to understand that the composition rules still applies to you anytime you're working with images you need to pay attention to a lot of things let me just add one image again all right so there is a lot of things that when it comes to images we don't pay attention to every images have lines in them so with this image for example let me just use the line to here and just draw a simple line see there's a line here there's one line here even where the eyes are looking these are all lines that are being created here where the eyes looking so you need to pay attention to that and also the idea as i mentioned before the rule of third if i select the crop tool you know and i come here you can see that there's the rule of third and if i click on it basically what they are saying is that if you want to place something in an image or if you want to 
place a text over an image these points these intersections are like the best places you know to actually place something because i think it's a general rule that says that those points are the most interesting parts of the image and i feel like this image doesn't really do that for us let's just with this image for example this point this point this point there's also the golden ratio which also has this intersections here and there's also golden ratio spira that one too it can actually be flipped you know as you flip the image but i would encourage you to go and do your own research on these things even you can just google like golden ratio or the rule of third and it will give you an understanding of image composition like what makes an image pleasing to look at and but what i will tell you is anytime you are designing basically most of the tips i use is if i want to place a text here i'll obviously place the text i'll put the text here maybe somewhere here because this is where the eye is looking at i think i have an example in my portfolio where with this postcard for example looking at this small girl's photo where she's looking at that is where i put the text that's why i put the most important information so that is also something to consider when you're working with images in your designs so that is all i can take for this section on the most important things to focus on when you are designing and this came from out of my years of experience i hope this video has been really helpful to you and please do all to like and comment and share this video with your folks there's more coming in so please if you're watching this anywhere you're watching this please comment and let the algorithm know that this video is helpful share it if you have a group on whatsapp or if you have a friend who wants to learn graphic design share it that is the only way to thank me and to say thank you because this actually took a lot of time to make thank you for your time i'll see you in the next video bye for now